Hello everyone. Can you hear me okay? How's it going? Who's playing the guitar? That's that's the main menu. <laughs> I've been learning some new skills in America. <laughs> no, I I have not. How you all doing, folks? It's good to have you here. I'm glad you can hear me okay. Where are the toes, Daniel? Uh, I can't do Fall Guys tonight. Ran into a bit of trouble. So, we're gonna shelf that. We'll do that later in the week. Uh, today, I got one of uh, my backup games and one of a, a game I've been asked to play a few times. That's been on my radar. I know nothing really about it other than like it's a choose your own adventure. Uh, and that's Kyle is Famous. Um, basically you can- I- I think you control a guy called Kyle and that's it. I don't really know anything about it. The title vaguely rings a bell. Complete edition, right? I- I- yes it is. I- I got it on Steam. But I thought we'd give it a go. Uh, people have popped that one in the suggestions box for a while. Uh, and we're gonna play Fall Guys later in the week. Let's give this one a go tonight. I got about three hours. Give it a shot. See how we get on. Yeah, how y'all doing though? Is there a bucket? I don't think so. Now, hello to NA Stream Times as well. Uh, we finally got one. Where like we're starting and it's like it's it's ten to six in the evening here from uh from Georgia. It's a, it's a bit more suited for you guys, I think. A uh, moment of silence for the Europeans, because I know it's very late at night for you. There's no worries if you can't stick about. But if you are here, how's it going as well? Yeah, this is more of a stateside stream. Just the hours uh, worked out this way today. But you're all very welcome. Laughs in American. <laughs> uh, hi, Thorot. Thank you for a thousand bits. Glad to have you in a problematic country. I'm only here a few more days. I'm actually hopping back on Saturday. Um, and this will be the last stream I do from the States. Uh, I'm taking tomorrow off, taking Saturday off. Uh, I don't know if I'll be streaming Sunday. I imagine I might be quite tired. So uh, bear, bear with me there. I'll probably do one on Monday instead. I think that might just be easier. Are you liking the Georgia heat? It's hot. Oh, it's hot. Ah, uh, but I'm taking shelter. Uh, we got aircon. Which I'm not even used to having. We don't really have air conditioning even in Ireland. That's why you don't stream at, uh, night now. Well, I mean, I- no, I've been- I've been streaming close to the same time I would stream back in Ireland, honestly. I- I normally if I start at 2 p.m. here, that's like 7 in Ireland, so yeah, it's about the same, honestly. Uh, Royal Tulip, thank you for a thousand bits as well. How do you mean, RT? It's almost 12 a.m. here, European time. I'm very glad to catch you again. Uh, again. Thank you very much. Hope you get some good rest soon. Daniel, come back. It's sunny here for us. I hear there's been a heat wave back in Ireland and that, yeah. I'll experience it soon. Don't worry. You like them mosquitoes? Uh, no, but they, they very much like me. I hate getting bug bites. My arm is like scratchy. I've got a few of them on me. It's unfortunate. It's just the way of life here. We're leaving cert weather actually didn't come this year. It just came a second to end it and now it's boiling. I mean, great. At least you don't have to sit. Uh, it's not like exam weather. You know, you get to enjoy it after. Normally, like, it's like a curse. It's like any time so you have to do exams in your life. Boiling hot weather, and then it rains the moment you're done. So you don't get to enjoy it. Put a hot spoon to a bite, it won't itch. That sounds a bit sore, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> that sounds a little painful. I don't know if that's like a, a cure-all or something. I wish I had pseudocream, that's the Irish cure-all. Pseudocream and flat 7-up will, uh... Cure any problem in your life. Hot spoon works. Okay. Never heard of that one. I should give it a go. 
Have you seen Legoland yet? Sadly, Legoland was uh, closed for its adults night. Uh, they did actually apologize, which was uh, quite sweet of them. They got, they got in touch. Le Lego is good for customer support stuff like that when things go wrong. But I was devastated. Um, because they have basically like a Legoland like Discovery Center that's supposed to be for kids, but they're supposed to have an adult night once a month. Um, but sadly the adult night seems to have been discontinued a while back. And they reached out about that, they gave us a refund on that, which is, which is something. I'm still quite sad about that. <laughs> but what you gonna do? Uh, I'll go to a Legoland. I think there's, there's some in the UK. I might go to one there. I might be in the UK before too long again. Uh, the Seaborg. Thank you for the 10 gift subs. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone who's subbing too and giving bits. It's good to have you here. That's kind of them. Yeah, I mean, like, I, they, they kind of acknowledge, like, yeah, there was a fuck up. That that shouldn't have been on the website. Um, but it's all good. I'll get to Legoland another day, don't you worry. When's the Legoland stream? I mean, if we get the Pokemon Go backpack, we might be able to do a lot of stuff, IRL stuff. That's what we're gonna try and get it for. I have one I need to look at the specs of a bit more. So, ba bear with me on that. Close with thank you for a thousand bits. Are we gonna ruin Kyle's life? I I don't know yet. We're gonna see. I I don't I don't really know how this game goes other than like you play as a guy called Kyle. No idea who he is outside of that. Let's just dive into it. Let's see what's going on. Like I'm I'm kind of blind on this. I've seen no gameplay of it before. Oh, that's a black screen. Apparently, you're gonna see no gameplay too. Hang on. Let me. There we go. Yeah, we'll just click settings, uh... Twitch chat voting? Does this have Twitch integration? Oh no, I... <laughs> I did not know that. Um... How do I... Twitch channel set. Is that gonna work? I, I I don't know how that's integrated. Um, let's test that in a moment. I'm not gonna auto pick the Twitch vote just yet, but you guys are gonna be able to vote along uh, as we go. Apparently, I have no idea how this works. T girl, thank you for the five gift subs as well. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see if that works in a mo. I was just kind of popping in here to get like subtitles. Can you guys see it okay? Can you hear it okay? It's not too loud. Oh, the misery. <laughs> okay, uh, let's give this a go. Uh, let's start. Kyle woke up. He is. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I realize it's gonna be an immediate problem. Turn off the voiceover. Let me do the voiceover. I think I think that's gonna be better for us. Cause yeah, I I I I think it's gonna be too much talking otherwise. That is the best storyteller. This is the first like Twitch vote. I did. I didn't. I. What do you guys think? Okay. All right. We'll try it. We'll try it for a round. Okay. I'll try it for a round. Let's see. Kyle woke up. He is famous. Good job, Kyle. Kyle is host of the most popular talk show in recent memory, Stay Up Late with Kyle. Okay. Stay Up Late with Kyle has grown in popularity quickly in the last year, and the public has noticed. Inside has called Kyle a most excellent dumpy white man. I don't like the use of that word here. Top Tech noted that Kyle is inspiring youth to explore STEM fields. Most other talk shows are dedicated to discussing Kyle and his personal details. 
Most online videos are best of clips taken from Kyle's latest broadcast. That's this broadcast here. Hello to the YouTube highlight crowd. The eye of the world is upon Kyle. Tonight is Kyle's most important guest interview yet. Stay up late with Kyle will be featuring Rachel May. She is a kind and lovely philanthropist. Okay. She is dear to the hearts of many. This interview requires preparation. Okay. Kyle cracked his eyes open, knowing today is his last chance to prepare for the interview. Kyle has 30 hours left. He must choose his actions wisely. This is going to be a long game. Uh, Kyle's first decision of the morning was made wi wisely. Wither away or exit the bed. I feel like we should probably get up. Kyle exited his bed and took a quick glance around his bedroom. Are these the votes for these? I, I, I don't know if these are going to come up for Twitch chat. Time until the interview, 29 hours. Uh, we can open a closet in our bedroom. We can what does scavenge mean in this context? Kyle quickly crouched down on the floor, realizing his immediate need for... Why is bugs even an option? <laughs> I'm looking for gossip. This is all a metaphor. <laughs> Kyle firmly pressed his ear into the carpet, hoping to hear some stray words from the neighbors below. I heard Rachel May is going on a trip out of the country soon. Oh, girlfriend, tell me more. What is happening? <laughs> well, what I will tell you is that every night I don a mask that looks like a bug and fight misdoers. What? There was a stunned <laughs> silence. Then a door opened and someone exited the neighbor's apartment. That's quite enough. Kyle returned to the center of the bedroom. Time until the interview, 23 hours. Uh, we lost some time just by doing that. What if I just keep doing that and the time runs out? Kyle quickly crouched down on the floor. Kyle. <laughs> if I just run Kyle. down the clock. <laughs> Kyle. 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 Yeah, we got one hour. Kyle. Qu <laughs> We're ready. Kyle hurried to the set. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. How's it going, Rachel? Rachel's smile quickly turned to shock as she realized Kyle had not put on clothes that day. Oh no, all we did is look at the floor for 30 hours. Kyle waved and smiled broadly. Rachel uncomfortably averted her eyes. Kyle started making his rounds around the room, greeting each crew member, none of whom <laughs> looked at him directly. I have nothing to be ashamed of. We <laughs> Kyle is a proud man. As it became apparent that Kyle had no intention of leaving, Rachel made some excuses and exited the set. This isn't going well. One by one, the crew followed suit. Kyle was left all alone. Oh, the end. <laughs> Kyle prepared by being a nudist. Well, that's the game. <laughs> we, just, we just sat on the floor for 30 hours and did nothing. Uh, that's a that, that that's a good start. I don't think resetting to the interview is going to help us because we were already naked. Kyle's first decision of the morning was made wisely. Kyle exited his bed and took a quick glance around his bedroom. Kyle quickly crouched down on the floor, realizing his immediate need for. <laughs> Kyle firmly pressed his ear into the carpet, hoping to hear some wait, 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 is words this... from the neighbors below. Do I get to choose another option? Or th this is just kind of auto play. Rachel May is going on a trip out this of the May again. soon. Well, there was a st Kyle return. Kyle quickly. Cra Kyle yeah, this is just a repeat. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle I, I need to get through this real quick. Kyle returned to the center of the bedroom. Uh, there we go. Let's start over. T girl, thank you for another five gift subs. Why happens if we just click wither away? Kyle decided to stay put and wither away. 
Kyle withered successfully and died. Aw, oh, shucks. Kyle is now a ghost. This does not relieve him of his responsibilities. Um, so just a heads up for chat. I don't think the voting is working. So you don't... I don't think you need to spam it. I don't think the vote works. Because I haven't seen any response uh, show up on screen. You need to wait out the timer. No, I, I, I didn't see anything come up. There's no indication that it's actually working, so I'm just going to keep going. But yeah, just a heads up. That, that's not working. I don't think the integration's live. Okay, let's get out of bed anyway. Okay, let's open the closet. Uh, it was dark, and he could only really see his hanging shirts. Choose an outfit. Kyle decided to take some time to choose the perfect outfit, knowing how important appearance is. What is a skunk pasty? Not sure what that one means. A slick suit sounds nice. We could just bring armor. Jeans and swing. I'm gonna go with the suit. Prepare Kyle miraculously crammed his dumpy body into the suit. The chest pockets were filled with random knickknacks. Wonderful. Okay, Kyle returned to the center of the bedroom. Uh, we can sit at the desk remote. Made his way over to his desk and sat down. Apparently that took an hour to sit down. Uh, check in the drawer. Grab one of the items stored there. Let's get the small key. Kyle grabbed the small key he kept in his desk. Okay. You can write some notes for the interview. Kyle wrote down his first question. Are you a mother or am I a mother? Is your mother a mother? <laughs> like, but enough about you. Let's talk about me. Kyle wrote down his second question. <laughs> you ever eaten like a whole egg? Kyle wrote down his third question. That's not a question. Do you ever smile? <laughs> Kyle wrote down his last question. To guilty pleasure, do you feel guilty? Are you guilty? Uh, let's go with this. Kyle ripped his page of notes out of the notebook sure. and got up from the desk. Do you feel guilty, Rachel? Okay, uh, back to room. Exit bedroom, the hallway. Kyle walked into the small hallway that connected the rooms of his apartment together. Um, check the locked door. We have a key for this, presumably. Kyle walked over to the strange door in the hallway but found quickly that the door was locked from the inside. What's the door at four and... Oh wait, no, we're dead, aren't we? Yeah, we, st we started the day by dying. So we can just go through it. I forgot about that. Kyle used his ghostly powers to walk straight through the door. Okay, go inside. Kyle found himself in the room. He stashed the various items sent to him by fans. Check the sewing machine. Kyle walked over to the dilapidated sewing machine. Its box was only half removed. That doesn't help me at all, does it? Okay, Kyle found himself in the room. He stashed the various items sent to him by fans. Back to the hallway. Uh, I can just leave? Kyle walked out into the middle of the road and took a long ponder and look around him. I can go to a tech store or check on the downstairs neighbor. There. I've only got a few hours left, but I've got a hankering for some Best Buy. Kyle walked into the clean, white tech store. He was greeted by Techno Jim, an elaborate cutout mascot playing soft music from a small microphone. I could just take Jim with me. Quickly, Quick before the attendant could acknowledge him, Kyle grabbed Techno Jim by the shoulders. Finding that Techno Jim's cardboard feet were bolted to the ground, Kyle started to heave upwards. I don't know how this works, because I'm also dead. Oh, th th these are my items that I've acquired. Ghost suit, small key. After several tugs, Techno Jim broke free, leaving one foot and one leg behind. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Kyle glanced at the attendant, who was staring, bewildered, and ran outside. Continue with my day. Uh, Kyle walked out into the middle of the road and took a long, pondering look around him. 
Time until the interview is zero hours. I assume that I've got to get going. I don't think I have time to check on the neighbor. Kyle hurried to the set. Per normal, he ceased to be a ghost before he arrived. That's convenient that you can do that, Kyle. Okay. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Interview Techno Jim instead. How, how does that work? <laughs> I want to see how this... Oh, I mean, our questions are kind of rubbish for Rachel, so we got to see what, what Jim has to say. Kyle roughly shoved Rachel out of her seat and placed Techno Jim in her stead. Hello, Techno Jim, said Kyle. I'm going to interview you today. Kyle grasped Techno Jim's hand and tried to shake it, but instead tore it off the cardboard frame. This is not going well. Kyle's producer, sensing viral media, pulled the bewildered Rachel out of frame and motioned the crew to go live. <laughs> so we can make a TikTok out of this quickly. He's just lost it. <laughs> Cameraman moved, lights flashed, and suddenly the studio was on air. Let's go. Hi, I'm Kyle said Kyle, and tonight I'm going to interview a very special guest. He pointed at Techno Jim using the dismembered arm. Do you need a hand there, Jim? I've got yours. Techno Jim started to smoke from the heat of the lights. Oh, he's burning a, a light. Would you like to introduce yourself? Asked Kyle. Knowing Jim would probably not speak, Kyle took it upon himself to be his voice as well. Wonderful. Hi, Kyle, he said, raising the pitch of his voice. My name is Rachel May, and I'm a very special guest. I want to interview Jim. What is happening? What? Rachel's expression of confusion turned to shock. Well, Rachel, you look way too thin and absolutely terrible, and you should feel ugly. Kyle gave Jim a meaningful stare. What? What does this mean? Wow, Kyle, he said. I sure wish I could look like you. Yeah, maybe it's for, it's for the best I was kept in the dark about this game, because I, I don't know what's happening anymore. Kyle's making me kind of nervous here. Techno Jim burst into flames. Yeah, that sounds about right. Instantaneously, the sprinkler system initiated. Curtains of water poured down from the rafters. Man, uh, obviously, thank you for the thousand bits. Thank you very much. Oh, I can hear- I can hear the fire blazing. Within seconds, the production equipment was doused in water. The set was soon aburst with electrical fires. This isn't going well. Kyle's crew abandoned their posts as cameramen and sound mixers to try to put the fires out. As the crew scrambled around, the cameras continued to run. Kyle sat, motionless, staring forward. It's a bit Eventually, intense. the fires were all put out. Kyle's producer shut off the broadcast, leaving Kyle's vacant stare as the final frame. That's very haunting. Kyle's rating skyrocketed. Oh, we did it. No, the producer was right. Techno Jim became a staple on the show, often ending up destroyed by the end of each episode. Perfect. It worked out. Although Rachel did not come back on the show, her cardboard portrayal did. Rachel was very popular. We did it. Kyle interviewed Rachel. We made it! I think that was a good ending. Like, the studio caught fire. I think it went well. Perfect interview. Okay, reset it. Okay, let's just run away from home if we can. How far can we get? Like, leave the bedroom. Leave the place. Leave the apartment. Oh, the only place I can go is the tech store or the downstairs neighbor. We're just, we're just trying to run. Kyle approached his downstairs neighbor's door and knocked. A middle-aged woman named Gabby answered the door. I think we're still naked, but that's okay. Good morning, neighbor, said Kyle cheerfully. Gabby looked at Kyle expectantly. Uh, ask Gabby about Gabby. Now let's get to know her. Gabby, asked Kyle, tell me about yourself. Gabby stiffened. Oh, you know, 
she said, putting on a fake smile. I just sit around here. This is the perfect interview candidate. Yes, I don't get around much. Never go out at night. I just stay here. Right here. Gabby glared at Kyle. Convinced by Gabby's statement, Kyle bid her goodbye and returned to the street. Okay, back to the street. Kyle walked out in the middle of the road and took a long ponder and look around him. Um, I can still hop to the tech store. I was trying to just like hightail it out of here, but I think this is as far as I can go. I can take Techno Gym again. I don't think that's gonna help. What's a free sample? Kyle asked the store attendant whether or not they offered any free samples to important customers. The attendant gave Kyle a confused and slightly vacant look. Kyle began to beg for a free sample. It's be very scary if like a naked man comes in like this. You got any SD cards? Wanting Kyle to leave, the attendant grabbed a decrepit phone meant for spare parts and held it out. Yeah, just bite into it. Kyle firmly clamped his mouth around the outstretched phone, creating several punctures in the screen. Incredible. Kyle grunted and yanked with his head until the attendant let go of the phone. The phone is now Kyle's to use forever. Okay. We've got we've got a new bit of kit. Turn to the apartment. Um, I probably need to get some clothes on before I get to the interview. Because I if, I if I don't have clothes, it's just going to be like the nudist engine, I think. Kyle decided to take some time to choose the perfect outfit, knowing how important appearance is. I don't know what a skunk pasty is, but we're still going to try it. Kyle chose the pasties made out of mashed skunk flesh. Well, that's not what I expected. Oh, no. Getting the slimy garments to stay proved difficult, so Kyle opted to stick them to his body with hot glue. That can't be good. Okay. Uh, that's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> okay, uh, we can move to the kitchen. Okay, open the fridge. Kyle opened the fridge, intending to find something to eat. Eat the fridge is just not, like... Just give me some mustard. Kyle pointed his neck directly upwards and hoisted the fridge on top of his face. How does this work? Somehow, miraculously, he wrapped his mouth around the device. He started to swallow. <laughs> In one slow, horrible movement, the fridge slid down Kyle's throat. This is disgusting. After many gurgles, pops, and snaps, Kyle felt relatively sure the fridge would not Bad back food. Out. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the pasties have been acquired, too. Okay, we're ready. We've swallowed a fridge. And we're covered in, like, skunk meat. Kyle hurried to the set. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. It's good to see you again, Rachel. Kyle responded. Scream and spin! <laughs> He's just having a mental breakdown. The man's already swallowed a fridge today. Kyle stretched his arms wide, tilted his neck upwards, and... ...was interrupted by his producer telling him and Rachel that it was time to start the show. I can insist or start the interview. Right, please let me scream. Kyle shoved his producer out of the way, spread his arms wide, and began to scream loudly. <laughs> He began to rotate slowly, screaming throughout, lightly brushing his hands against the faces of Rachel and his producer. He's not taking this well. After several minutes, Kyle was finished. He slowly put his hands to his sides and smiled. I'm ready, said Kyle. Rachel blinked at Kyle, shrugged, and walked over to her seat. It's just a warm-up exercise, you know? We all, like, before I start a live stream myself, I... Just scream aloud and then try, like, unmute the mic. That whole, like, kind of start and soon screen is just me screaming constantly in the background. Like, ah! Can you hear me okay? How's it going? Sound check. A moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Let's start the broadcast. 
Good evening, everyone, said Kyle, looking at the camera. Welcome back to Stay Up Late with Kyle. Are these gonna have any effect? Introduce Rachel. Kyle vomited all of the horrible things he had <laughs> eaten earlier onto the floor. Yes, they might. Rachel looked at Kyle, concerned, gave a couple coughs, and decided to play it cool and keep the it's show running. There's just a running. fridge here now. <laughs> Kyle stopped, then vomited again, then continued with a shaky voice. Tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel May, who needs no more introduction. He's not taking it well. Kyle motioned to Rachel, who smiled and waved at the camera. Hello, Kyle, she said. I'm glad to be here. Well, I'm sure we'll have a lot to discuss. <clears throat> so we might as well <laughs> dive right in, said Kyle. He's not holding up okay. I'm very ready, said Rachel with a winning smile. In a shock, Kyle realized he had never bothered to prepare any notes for the interview. Oh, uh, can we can we just improv it? Knowing he had the eyes of millions upon him, Kyle came up with a solution quickly. Hey, blame Rachel. Run away. <laughs> play dead. I don't know what play dead is going to accomplish. I can't blame her for it. Like, how, how does this work? Rachel, I need to be honest. You're not terribly interesting, and I could not <laughs> think of what I should ask you. Oh, no. In fact, continued Kyle, I would far rather interview a fish than I would you. And furthermore, said Kyle, I'm not sure I could tell the difference between a you and a fish. It's incredibly mean, Kyle. Kyle leaned back in his chair and desperately hoped the blame had been shifted adequately. Rachel glowered at Kyle. Kyle glowered back. Rachel left the studio. I don't think it's going well. Kyle no longer had a guest and spent the next 42 minutes staring <laughs> at the camera silently. Oh no. <laughs> Kyle prepared by blaming others. That that didn't go well either. I should have played dead. Yeah, I, sh I, should, I shouldn't have blamed her. Might have had a better response. Wait, I can browse social media. I have a new option. Kyle started to scroll through news articles on his phone. Stay up late with Kyle ranked number one and number two show on television. Okay. New East Bridge being constructed after being found to not actually exist. Authorities investigating. Oh yeah, I still have the phone. I didn't expect to. How, how has that been maintained? It broke the timeline. Yeah, I, I don't know why this is still here. Another grand larceny and crime spree streak. Evidence points to perpetrator fleeing the country. Rachel May to unexpectedly leave the country on very, very long vacation after interview tonight. Okay, that sounds important. It said you got it forever, I guess. Who is the bug vigilante recently spotted pursuing larcenists? Kyle fails to show up to several charity events. Oh no. Bug Vigilante shows up to charity events with fresh baked pastries. Donations flourish. Put on him. Hot dogs making resurgence as fuel source for both humans and tugboats. Phone model recalled. Techno gym stores blame overuse by customers. I, I take it we can just be here the entire time. And spend like 30 hours just on our phone in bed. I feel like we might need to get ready. We need to get out of bed. Okay, open the closet. Choose an outfit. Kyle decided to take some time to choose the perfect outfit, knowing how important appearance is. Okay, we're gonna be ready for combat. Kyle was unsure of what exactly caused him to decide to wear his armor, but it felt like the right thing to do. After much squeezing and sweating, Kyle managed to wrap the metal suit around his dumpy self. It's very upsetting that this is the word they've decided on to describe Kyle. Okay. Sit at desk. Uh, write notes for the interview. Kyle wrote down his first question. Okay. Is your mother a mother? Kyle wrote down his Ever second question. Ever eaten an question. egg? Kyle wrote down Do you his... smile? Kyle wrote down his last question. Then are you guilty? 
Kyle ripped his page of notes out of the notebook and got up from the desk. Okay, we have notes for the interview. So we're prepared for it. Was there anything in the drawer? Get some change. Kyle scooped up the change scattered around the desk drawer. Okay, back to room. Uh, what do we feel like doing now? In scavenge. Kyle quickly crouched down on the floor, realizing his immediate need for... Get a few bugs. Kyle started to pick between the fuzz of his bedroom carpet, hoping to catch a stray beetle or two. This is disgusting, Kyle. Soon, he had a small handful of various insects, dead and alive. Keep... It's disgusting. Keep them for later. Kyle stashed the wriggling mass for later use. Ball of bugs. <laughs> we have everything we need for the interview. Kyle hurried to the set. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Kyle responded. We're not going to scream this time. Because we, we went too far with the screaming last time. It, it scared her. Answer politely. And I as well, Rachel, answered Kyle, extending his hand in greeting. You are a most welcome guest. Shake hands. After other mild exchanges of pleasantries, Kyle and Rachel were prompted to take their places for the broadcast. A moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Okay, we're all right, we're starting. Good evening, everyone, said Kyle, looking at the camera. Welcome back to Stay Up Late with Kyle. Tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel May, who needs no more introduction. Kyle motioned to Rachel, who smiled and waved at the camera. Hello, Kyle, she said. I'm glad to be here. It's going well so far. In response, Kyle collapsed on the floor. Oh. From a combination of stressful preparation and not eating anything, Kyle had passed out. Oh, we should have had a snack. We should have eaten the bugs. Nobody in the studio quite knew what to do with him. They began to poke Kyle in the back to see if he moved. After a while, they ended the broadcast, shut off the lights, and went home. Kyle was left face first on the floor. So Kyle prepared by starving himself. Jesus Christ, Kyle. It's hard, it's hard to get him ready for this interview. Should have eaten the bugs. <laughs> Honestly, I should have. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna die real quick. Kyle decided to stay put and wither away. Kyle withered successfully and died. Kyle is now a ghost. This does not relieve him of his responsibilities. Okay, so we need to get dressed. Choose an outfit. Kyle Slick suit. Kyle miraculously crammed his dumpy body into the suit. The chest pocket. It's fine. Okay, that's that's ready. Um, sit at the desk. We need to write notes for the interview. Kyle wrote down his first question. Is your mother a mother? Kyle wrote Every in the egg. Kyle wrote down his Just third statement. Question. <laughs> Kyle wrote. Are you guilty? Kyle ripped his page of notes out of the notebook and got up from the desk. Back to the desk. Back to room. Okay, let's go to the kitchen. Check the pantry. Kyle wanted to access the pantry, but found it was locked with a small keyhole. Okay, that, so, if we want the pantry, then we need the key for that. Maybe there's something in the Kyle fridge we can still eat. Kyle opened the fridge, eat. intending to find something to eat. Maybe not the crust on the wall. Uh, mustard's a vegetable, so we could do that. Prepare breakfast. Kyle constructed a breakfast of poached eggs and toast, along with a small fruit cup and grilled sausage. That sounds lovely. Kyle ate his breakfast slowly and thoughtfully, enjoying every bite. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> skipped that a little too fast. That's all. Oh, that's okay. All right, we're prepared. We have that. <laughs> okay. Uh, we can leave the apartment. Um. Do we want to bring Jim from the tech store, or do we want to visit the neighbor? Do 
This is the neighbor, okay. Kyle approached his downstairs neighbor's door and knocked. A middle-aged woman named Gabby answered the door. Good morning, neighbor, said Kyle cheerfully. Gabby looked at Kyle expectantly. Okay, ask about Rachel. Gabby, Kyle asked, what are your true thoughts about Rachel May? Oh, Rachel, Gabby said, she's a wonderful woman. Her generous acts have inspired more good work than bad. She sounds unsure of herself there. Gabby trailed off, not meeting Kyle's eyes. After several uncomfortable minutes of silence, Kyle turned around and left. Okay, that's it. So, showtime. So, we have those 30 hours and 30 prompts to just prepare as much as we can. We need clothes, we need food, and we need an interview each time. Uh, otherwise, we just kind of fail it. Kyle hurried to the set. Per normal, he ceased to be a ghost before he arrived. Perfect. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Kyle responded. We can still get the screaming in, and this doesn't seem to affect it too much, does it? Am I okay to scream? <laughs> or do I just add some... I just want to know if I can get the screaming in. You need a good scream. Yeah. Kyle stretched his arms wide, tilted his neck upwards, and... ...was interrupted by his producer telling him and Rachel that it was time to start the show. I really need to get this out of my system. Kyle shoved his producer out of the way, spread his arms wide, and began to scream loudly. He began to rotate slowly, screaming throughout, lightly brushing his hands against the faces of Rachel and his producer. After several minutes, Kyle was finished. He slowly put his hands to his sides and smiled. I'm ready, said Kyle. Yep, we're good to go. Rachel blinked at Kyle, shrugged, and walked over to her seat. A moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Good evening, everyone, said Kyle, looking at the camera. Welcome back to Stay Up Late with Kyle. Tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel May, who needs no more introduction. Kyle motioned to Rachel, who smiled and waved at the camera. Hello, Kyle, she said. I'm glad to be here. Well, I'm sure we'll have a lot to discuss, so we might as well dive right in, said Kyle. I don't think we've ever gotten this far, have we? Every other time we've gotten here, like, Kyle is about to die. Well, he's, like, puking. I'm very ready, said Rachel with a winning smile. Kyle produced the notes he had taken earlier. Ever eaten a raw egg, Rachel? Hey, Rachel, ever eaten a raw egg whole? asked Kyle. Um, like shell and all? asked Rachel. Kyle continued. I have, uh, like, a lot. It's really bad, though, so sometimes I spit it back up. Oh, God. There was a silence. It actually gets easier the more you do it, continued Kyle without losing momentum. So don't start, I say. Rachel chose not to answer and looked in another direction. Kyle asked another question. Uh, Rachel, is your mother a mother? So, said Kyle, my mother is a mother. My mother's mother is her mother and my mother's mother. And many mothers have mother's mother's mother. Is your mother a mother? Rachel went to answer and stopped. I believe, she said eventually, that I should answer... yes? That was a trick question. Kyle asked another question. I just need to get this off my chest, Rachel. Hey, I ran over a puppy on purpose, said Kyle. Everyone in the studio froze. Kyle spread his hands out wide. It's a joke! <laughs> <laughs> oh no. He started laughing from the bottom of his stomach. That's not good. Nobody laughed with Kyle. Several minutes later, he stopped laughing and moved on. This is very awkward. Kyle asked another question. <laughs> this is all we have left. I don't know if these interview questions are going to help us much. Rachel. Are you guilty? Kyle threw his questions on the floor, stood up and pointed at her. Rachel's eye twitched slightly. Guilty of what, dear Kyle? 
She smiled disingenuously. Guilty, spat Kyle. Of your crimes! Rachel did not answer. Her eyelids both started twitching uncontrollably. Oh shit, she's done something. Call the police on the phone. Kyle whipped out his phone and started dialing the police. Kyle quickly realized that the broken phone he had gotten for free was not able to call anyone. What? Kyle looked sadly at his hand, realizing he had botched a wonderful opportunity to be helpful. Rachel looked at Kyle smiling. Her eyebrows twitched a bit. What's the problem, Kyle? Anything I can help you with? She glared, still smiling. What has she done? Kyle looked up from his hand sadly. He slowly shook his head. The interview continued on. Rachel answered questions cheerily. Kyle forced a smile through the entire episode, but he felt very sad inside. Like, what were we on the verge of there? Kyle had missed his chance to be helpful. Kyle wasn't helpful. Unlocked a new cursor. Oh, we get like a flashlight instead of a pen if we want. We gotta fix the phone. Apparently, yeah. You're on the verge of being a hero. I, I, I don't understand what Rachel did at, at all. I don't think I'm supposed to. Okay. Right, well, we got some stuff that we need to do. Exit the bed. Closet. Outfit. Kyle decides. Suit. Kyle. Sit at desk. I'm gonna need- I- I can get the change and the key. I- the key's to the pantry and then the change... Maybe I can take that to the tech shop or something. Kyle scooped up- Yeah, I need to write the notes. Kyle wrote down his first question. Am I a mutter? Kyle wrote down his second question. Beef mash or blend it? Kyle wrote down his third question. I kinda just wanna hear him laugh again, so I'm gonna say this again. Kyle wrote down his last question. And are you guilty? Kyle ripped his page of notes out of the notebook and got up from the desk. Okay. Uh, do I want to get the key for the pantry as well? That That's in the desk drawer as well. Are we going for the pantry or the tech store? We might not have time for both. Kyle Gr Okay. Back to room. We do need to get something from the kitchen. Check the pantry. Kyle wanted to access the pantry, but found it was locked with a small keyhole. The pantry door lock creaked as if it hadn't moved for years, but eventually opened. What's inside? Instead of an assortment of canned goods and grains, Kyle's pantry stored his massive amount of bottled lard. That's... Not a great food to keep, Kyle. Uh, let's- let's chug one. We- we need some food. Kyle voraciously grabbed the closest bottle, snapped the neck against the wall, and sucked out all of the fat within a minute. That's pretty disgusting, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle wildly sucked down another Oh, no bottle. bad food. Felt very sick. Kyle's vomit and the lard were mixing in a way to make it hard to tell which was which. <laughs> Finish the pantry. As Kyle finished the last bottle of lard, he felt a wave of accomplishment come over him. Okay, I don't know what that accomplishes. I don't know. What have you done, Kyle? Kyle opened the fridge. Okay, we can, we can still to get some breakfast to eat. No, we don't have time. Kyle hurried to the set. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. He the to I was trying to. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and sm okay. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking Hi, Rachel. Kyle responded. Uh, we'll just answer politely this time. We'll I do like getting the screaming though. I do like getting the screaming. It feels it feels reassuring. Kyle stretched his arms wide, tilted his neck upwards and was interrupted by- Oh, I gotta get my screaming. Kyle shoved his producer out of the way, spread his arms wide, and began to scream loudly. He began to rotate slowly, screaming throughout, lightly it's, it's brushing his comforting. hands against the faces of Rachel and his producer. 
After several minutes, Kyle was finished. He slowly put his hands to his sides and smiled. I'm ready, said Kyle. Let's go. Rachel blinked at Kyle, shrugged, and walked over to her seat. A moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Good evening, everyone, said Kyle, looking at the camera. Welcome back to Stay Up Late with Kyle. Kyle vomited all of the horrible things he had eaten earlier onto the floor. Okay, it's not a fridge this time. Rachel looked at Kyle, concerned, gave a couple coughs, and decided to play it cool and keep the it's show running. It's just three bottles of lard. Kyle stopped, then vomited again, then continued with a shaky voice. Tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel May, who needs no more introduction. Kyle motioned to Rachel, who smiled and waved at the camera. Hello, Kyle, she said. I'm glad to be here. What has she done, though? We still don't know. Well, I'm sure we'll have a lot to discuss. <clears throat> so we might as well dive right in, said Kyle. I'm very ready, said Rachel with a winning smile. Kyle produced the notes he had taken earlier. Yeah, we, we can't call the police on the phone because it's still not repaired. We can't do that yet. Uh, I want to hear the laugh, though. Hey, I ran over a puppy on purpose, said Kyle. Everyone in the studio froze. Kyle spread his hands out wide. It's a joke! <laughs> <laughs> he started laughing from the bottom of his stomach. Wonderful. Nobody laughed with Kyle. Several minutes later, he stopped laughing and moved on. Kyle asked another question. Uh, how do you like your beef? A burning question from the fans, said Kyle. Beef, do you prefer it mashed or blended? Rachel answered promptly. Mashed. And no more was said on that matter. I don't know if that's the correct choice. Kyle asked another question. Rachel, am I a mother? Kyle looked at her very <laughs> seriously. Rachel was visibly unsure of how to respond. Well, Kyle, I think you might be a better source of answering that question than I am. But do you think I'm a mother? Asked Kyle, pushing further. We need to know, Rachel. Rachel paused for a second before answering. I think you inspire youth to pursue STEM fields, she answered. What does this have to do with anything, Rachel? Kyle asked another question. Rachel. Are you guilty? Kyle threw his questions on the floor, stood up and pointed at her. Rachel's eye twitched slightly. Guilty of what, dear Kyle? She smiled disingenuously. Guilty, spat Kyle. Of your crimes! Rachel did not answer. Her eyelids both started twitching uncontrollably. Can't call the police. After reading his final question, who just Kyle leave it there? Paper. I'm just teasing you, Rachel. Well, Rachel, he said, I think that's all I was planning on asking you. If that's the case, Kyle, may I ask you something in return? Asked Rachel, smiling one more time. Do you prepare for your interviews in advance? Because you seem very together. <laughs> As we've been like screaming and like vomiting everywhere. <laughs> Before Kyle could answer, the camera shut down. The broadcast was over. Kyle returned home knowing the interview had gone well. It's good. But as he lay in bed and drifted to sleep, he felt that perhaps something was still missing. Kyle prepared very well, unlocked more world options. Okay, uh... Check the flashlight cursor. Can I- can I change the cursor? Oh, I can, weirdly enough. There's 31 endings. Okay, well, let's try that. Maybe it'll reveal something. I don't know. Kyle woke up. He is famous. Okay, skip this bit.
Right click at the spin. <laughs> Incredible. Technology is here. Maybe this might reveal like a hidden option at some point. Okay. Uh, I need to get... Uh, let's get some change and go to the tech store. Uh, no, the CDs now. There's a flashlight in here. Kyle began shuffling through the dusty CD pile that held all of his favorite music. Many of the CDs were unlabeled or broken. Carnival music, festival music, classical music, dance music. Gotta go dance. I took a CD with dancing with a dancing couple on the front. Yeah, I, I have to take the change. Kyle scooped up the change scattered around the desk drawer. Uh, I can take the flashlight as well. Kyle grabbed the flashlight, but after jiggling the switch, he found it was out of batteries. Okay, so that's that's no good, really. Uh, let's just head out to the tech store with that change. This is the tech store. Buy batteries with the change. Give a review of the free sample. So, so this has continuity. Uh, we'll, we'll buy some batteries. Kyle counted out one dollar and ninety-eight cents in pennies and nickels and traded them for a small packet of batteries. Okay. Kyle crammed the batteries into his flashlight. Pretty good. Uh, return to the street. Return to the apartment. Uh, where do we want to use the flashlight? Either like the pantry or like the closet come to mind. Want to try the closet? Closet's in the bedroom, yeah? It was dark and he could only really see his hanging shirts. Inspect the rusty locker. There's so many new options. Kyle shined his flashlight into his moist cave-like closet that had not seen light in years. After several minutes of searching around with the light, Kyle saw something unusual in the back. There was a pile of strange items, including a small metal box with a large red button stamped with Travel Time. What does that do? Kyle, bored of the situation, mashed the button, hardly reading the label above. The box hummed and shook. The outside metal grew hot and slowly curved in on itself. Uh-oh. In a moment, it was early in the morning. Kyle had gained several hours of preparation time. That was a little loud, Kyle. Oh my god, wait, we reset it though. Okay. Can I just do that again? No, you can't do it twice. Okay. Okay, so now we can... We can choose the outfit. Kyle decided to take some time to choose the perfect... Get her suit. Kyle miraculously crammed his... Uh, we need to sit at the desk. Th there's still a rusty locker in the closet, but we need to do some of the other things here. Write the notes for the interview. Kyle wrote down his first question. Yeah, let's go very vanilla. Kyle wrote down his second question. What are some diet tips? Kyle wrote down his What's third question. What's your funniest question. story? Kyle are you guilty? Kyle ripped his page of notes out of the notebook and got up from the desk. Okay, back to room. Uh, go to the kitchen. Open the fridge. Kyle opened the fridge, intending to find something to eat. Can I just eat the mustard? Do I need to prepare a full breakfast? Eat the crust. Kyle started scraping streaks of crud and spots of mold off of the walls of his fridge. After wadding it into a crusty, moist ball, Kyle popped it into his mouth. And That's began disgusting. To chew. Several minutes of crunching later, Kyle finished and swallowed the ball. He's not bowl. doing too good. It felt sticky in his stomach. Okay, I can go back to the tech shop. 
Give a review of the free sample. This phone, said Kyle, is several years old and has exposed wires coming out of the back. Kyle continued. Also, the screen has had issues ever since I used it to hammer nails into the wall. Furthermore, when I submerge it in water, I get severely shocked until it runs out of battery. This is not how you use a phone, Kyle. The attendant looked at Kyle, pursed his lips, and said nothing. Feeling he had made his argument, Kyle decided to leave. What was the point of that review? <laughs> What did that accomplish? Kyle approached his downstairs neighbor's door and knocked. A middle-aged woman named Gabby answered the door. Consume Gabby. <laughs> Why is that? Why is that even an option? Oh, we didn't have time. Kyle hurried. We didn't to the have set. time. Sitting across from his host chair, as Kyle we'll approached her, Rachel her looked up time. and smiled. Good evening, Kyle. we just like eat she the said, fridge, the liar, and Gabby. I've been looking forward to being here. <laughs> Kyle responded. And I as well, Rachel, answered Kyle, extending his hand in greeting. You are a most welcome and guest. And the bugs. Just eat like everything. <laughs> After other mild exchanges of pleasantries, Kyle and Rachel were prompted to take their places for the broadcast. <laughs> A moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Good evening, everyone. We still don't Kyle, have the phone the working, camera. yeah. Welcome back I don't know to what the CD does. Late with Kyle. Kyle vomited all of the horrible things he had eaten earlier onto the floor. Rachel looked at Kyle, concerned. Yeah, this is gave fine. We've had this. Kyle stopped, then vomited again. Tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel. Become May, Rachel May. No more introduction. No, I have a CD. Let's, let's give let's give the CD. As Rachel started to reply, Kyle clamped his hand over her mouth. Oh. Hush, he said. I need to do something before we can continue. Kyle removed the CD he had brought to the interview and placed it in a nearby player deck. Okay. The sound system kicked into action, piping Kyle's music throughout the studio. Rachel briefly listened, a blank expression on her face. Smiling, Kyle closed his eyes and enjoyed the music for a moment. Then, he spoke. All right, now everything's ready. <laughs> Let's begin. The contrast, because like we puked to like this <laughs> carnival music. This doesn't sound like dance music at all. Kyle produced the notes he had taken earlier. There were some diet tips. Rachel, you managed to keep such a thin and healthy figure. Said Kyle, what is your best <laughs> this diet? music. I'm sorry, Kyle, said Rachel. What on earth is this music? It's very... Well, it's something. It's an old favorite, Rachel, said Kyle. This is what I grew up on. It's part of my most special collection. Kyle and Rachel sat silently, the music playing in the background. Rachel began to frown. <laughs> Suddenly, the wall uh -huh. next to Kyle exploded. It's not what I expected. Through the hole stepped several men in dazzling flamboyant costumes of bright color. They held guitars, pianos, and other instruments. Kyle, said the man in front, we are the band of your childhood. Okay. Kyle's jaw dropped, smiling. He put his hands to his cheeks, his eyes sparkled. We have come to issue a grievance about playing our music on TV without a license. Oh, oh that's very upsetting. Like being flagged for copyright on YouTube. The man took his guitar in both hands and began slamming Kyle's face repeatedly. After several hours, the grievance had been sufficiently repaid. The band left through the hole they had created in the wall. Kyle lay on the floor, thinking about what had happened. Rachel slowly slid to his side. Are... are you feeling okay, Kyle? She asked. She had a concerned expression on her face. They got me, Rachel. They got me. Have you ever met your childhood idol, Rachel? Asked Kyle. The person you looked up to for as long as you can remember. I can't say I have, said Rachel. Kyle raised both fists into the air. It feels amazing! Well, at least he's taking it well. If I had the armor Kyle there, spent I might the be rest might of survive. Rachel's interview chatting happily about meeting his lifelong favorite band. 
Rachel listened and asked questions politely, seeming unfazed that her moment on TV had been uprooted. Eventually, the studio was out of time and the broadcast shut off. Kyle and Rachel walked out of the studio together. Kyle was grinning widely. It went well. The two said their goodbyes and walked off in separate directions. As Kyle walked home, he felt like the interview had been everything he had hoped it to be. Kyle had gotten everything he had ever wanted as a child. It went well. Kyle played music. Okay, let's try just to eat literally everything ended. <laughs> so, the fridge, Gabby, the bugs, um, everything in the pantry. <laughs> We need everything. I shouldn't wither away, should I? I should just get out of bed. Okay, so we need to uh, scavenge. Kyle quickly crouched down on the floor, realizing his immediate need for... Resources is a new option. We need the bugs, though. Kyle started to pick between the fuzz of his bedroom carpet, hoping to catch a stray beetle or two. Soon, he had a small handful of various insects, dead and alive. Eat immediately. Kyle threw back his head and crammed the sticky, wriggling mass into his mouth. He felt refreshed. Okay, bad food consumed. Uh, I need to get the key. The pantry. Kyle grabbed the small key he kept in his desk. Okay, time travel to eat twice as much food in one time period. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we, we could do that. Grab the flashlight. Oh, grab that means I need to get... Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I needed to, um... I need to grab the, uh, the change, don't I? Kyle? This isn't saving us much time. I have the change. Okay, we need to run outside. Tech store. Buy the batteries. Kyle. Kyle. Turn to street. Turn to apartment. Bedroom. <laughs> so now we're just naked with fl flashlights and bugs. Yeah, we did. We didn't make it. Hang on. Okay, restart it. Let's, let's try this better. Flashlight. Kyle. Change. Kyle. Okay, exit. Leave apartment. Text store. It takes so long to set Kyle this up. Count. Kyle. Kyle. Turn to apartment. Okay, we have 13 hours. Probably should have e eaten Gabby while I was there. Um, honestly, it would have been the best time to do it. Okay, we can quickly get the Kyle, bugs. Quick. Kyle st so Eat the bugs. Kyle threw... Open the closet. Kyle shut. We can After just barely weeks, get this. There was a pile of strange items, including a small metal box with a large red button stamped with travel time. Kyle, bored of the situation, mashed the button, hardly reading the lit. The box hummed and shook. The outside metal grew hot and slowly curved in on itself. In a moment, it was early in the morning. Kyle had gained several hours of preparation time. Okay. So we're back with the flashlight now. We just barely made it. I've already eaten the bugs. Can I now eat like the bugs again? I don't know if uh, eating the bugs twice accomplishes is the only thing. 
Oh, I need the key as well for the pantry. Yep. Kyle Grant. Okay, back to room. We're not going to write notes for the interview. We don't need them. Okay. Move to the kitchen. Uh, we need Kyle to eat the fridge. The fridge into Kyle pointed his neck directly upwards and hoisted the fridge on top of his face. Somehow, miraculously, he wrapped his mouth around the device. He started to swallow. In one slow, horrible movement, the fridge slid down Kyle's throat. After many gurgles, pops, and snaps, Kyle felt relatively sure the fridge would not come back out. Okay, that's pretty good. Kyle wanted to access the pantry. The pantry, pantry door time. Lock. I don't Instead know if we're going to have time. of canned goods and grains, Kyle's pantry stored his massive amount of bottled locks. Eat some Kyle lard. Graciously grabbed the closest bottle, snapped the neck against the wall, and sucked out all of the fat within a minute. Get another one. Kyle wildly sucked down another bottle. He felt very sick. Get another Kyle's one. Kyle's vomit and the lard were mixing in a way to make it hard to tell which was which. Get another one. As Kyle <laughs> finished the last bottle of lard, he felt a wave of accomplishment come over him. Okay, we got too bad food currently. <laughs> No, sorry, we've got three bad food. Okay, so the eat everything run is um, doing quite well so far. Uh, so we have to go eat Gabby now. <laughs> Kyle approached his downstairs neighbor's door and knocked. A middle-aged woman named Gabby answered the door. Consume Gabby. Kyle unhinged his jaw and swallowed Gabby whole. Job done, Kyle returned to the middle <laughs> of the street. <laughs> Okay, uh, Kyle walked down into the middle of the road, took a long ponder and look around him. Uh, anything we can get in the tech store? Can we just steal Jim? Quickly, before the attendant could acknowledge him, Kyle grabbed Techno Jim by the shoulders. Finding that Techno Jim's cardboard feet were bolted to the ground, Kyle started to heave upwards. After several times, oh, we don't have Techno clothes. Jim You're right. Free, oh, we've done it wrong then. And one leg behind. Kyle glanced at the attendant, who was staring, bewildered, and ran outside. Oh no, it's just gonna end because we have no Kyle, clothes, isn't it? Sitting As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Rachel's smile quickly turned to shock as she realized Kyle had not put on clothes that day. Oh no. Kyle waved and smiled broadly. Rachel uncomfortably averted her eyes. Kyle started making his rounds around the room, greeting each crew member, none of whom looked at him directly. All that eating for nothing. As it became apparent that Kyle had no intention of leaving, Rachel made some excuses and exited the set. One by one, the crew followed suit. Kyle. I'll prepare for being a, a nudist. God damn it. Years at the academy wasted. <laughs> Okay, well, we need a lot of stuff from the desk. So check in the drawer. We need the flashlight. Kyle. We need the change for the batteries. Kyle. And we need the key. Kyle grab. You need it, the crust anyway. Can I eat the crust in the fridge and then eat the fridge? Will it let me do that? Try is. What if we only eat Cappy? Okay, uh, rush over to the tech store for now. Leave apartment. We'll stop to eat Cappy. Kyle, a middle aged woman. Kyle unhinged his jaw and swallowed Gabby whole. Okay. Job done. Gabby acquired. Buy the batteries. Kyle. Kyle. Return to the street, return to the apartment, return to the bedroom, open the closet, inspect with the flashlight. Kyle. After several, there was a pile of strange items. Just including barely a small made metal it. Including box with a large red button stamped with travel time. Travel time. Kyle, bored of the situation, mashed the button, hardly reading the label above. The box hummed and shook. The outside metal grew hot and slowly curved in on itself. 
was early in the morning. Kyle had gained several hours of preparation time. Okay, and this is great because we've already eaten Gabby. Okay, choose an outfit. We'll Kyle get to that rusty to locker take some soon. time to choose the perfect outfit, knowing how important appearance is. Uh, do you want the pasties or the suit? Now eat her again. <laughs> Can I eat Gabby a second time? Kyle miraculously crammed his dumpy body into the suit. Okay, scavenge. Kyle quickly crouched. Bugs. Kyle. Soon he had a. Eat immediately. Kyle Okay, exit, move to kitchen. We need to, to clean the out the pantry. The pa Instead of an assortment. Chug, Kyle. chug, Kyle. chug, Kyle. finish off the As pantry. Kyle fin uh, open the Kyle fridge. Open the fridge, intending to find something to eat. Do I eat the crust first and then the fridge? Oh, do I, I mean, presumably if I eat the fridge, I also eat the crust. Just eat the fridge. Kyle pointed his neck directly upwards and hoisted the fridge on top of his face. Somehow, miraculously, he wrapped his mouth around the device. He started to swallow. In one slow, horrible movement, the fridge slid down Kyle's throat. After many gurgles, okay, that's and snaps, three bad food. Return to hallway. Uh, the behind the locked door was just a sewing machine. There might be something new there. Should I prepare notes for the interview? Do you think I have time, or should I just try to go eat Gabby a second time? <laughs> just go eat Gabby again. What else can be eaten? Okay, let's go. Let's go eat Gabby again. I can't. Gabby's gone. Okay, well we can steal Jim. Quickly, finding the techno. After several tug, Kyle glanced at the. Okay, we're ready for the interview. Kyle hurried to the set. Sitting across so from his host chair was Gabby a glamorous woman with an food. air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Okay, do I interview Techno Jim here? Because I feel like I, I, I know I'm going to puke if I interview Rachel. I don't think I eat Jim because I think that's just going to be its own ending. Yeah. Kyle responded. Okay. I like to, I do like to get my screaming in. Kyle stretched his arms wide, tilted his neck upwards, and was interrupted by his producer telling him and Rachel. No, we gotta get the screaming. Kyle shoved his producer out of the way, spread his arms wide. He began to rotate slowly, screaming throughout, lightly brushing his hands against the faces of Rachel and his producer. After several minutes, Kyle was finished. He slowly put his hands to his sides and smiled. I'm ready. We go. Kyle. Let's go. We've eaten everyone. Rachel blinked at Kyle, shrugged, and walked over to her seat. A moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Good evening, everyone, said Kyle, looking at the camera. Welcome back to Stay Up Late with Kyle. Kyle vomited all of the horrible things he had eaten earlier onto the floor. Okay, so Gabby should be here in theory. Rachel looked at Kyle, concerned, gave a couple coughs, and decided to play it cool and keep the show running. Kyle stopped then vomited again, then continued with a shaky voice. Tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel May, who needs no more introduction. D did Gabby not get vomited up? <laughs> I don't understand. I guess we can become Rachel. However, said Kyle, suddenly dropping his voice, Rachel May is not sitting next to me. She is not new to this show. She did not walk in before me. In fact, said Kyle, I am Rachel May. Rachel looked at Kyle, confused, and silently mouthed the words, You are who? Kyle stood up quickly and threw his arm high above him, pointing upwards. 
I have never been, Kyle, he proclaimed. I have never been the host of the show Stay Up Late with Kyle. What is happening? Kyle looked and pointed directly at the camera. I am here for but one reason, to interview myself. Kyle sat down in his chair and went to produce the notes he had taken earlier. Uh-oh. It was then that Kyle remembered that he had not bothered to prepare any notes for the interview. I was too busy eating people. Realizing he did not know how to handle this situation, Kyle began sweating profusely, but he continued. Firstly, he said, Is your... Uh, is your name Kyle? <laughs> no! Kyle slammed his fist down repeatedly. Then he stopped talking. A thick, uncomfortable silence so if I become hung Rachel, over the studio. Then I get to ask myself the questions that I've, I've written, I think. The silence did not end. The cameras continued to roll. Nobody moved or spoke. Eventually, Rachel got out of her chair and walked off screen. One by one, members of the crew followed suit. Eventually, Kyle was left alone in the studio, camera still running, silently sitting in frame. This episode of Stay Up Late with Kyle became the longest episode in television history. I mean, that's gotta be worth something. Kyle continued to sit in front of the camera all night and into the morning, wishing it would end. Question, why is there a check mark next to Gabby after we ate her? I don't know what that signifies. As evening fell again, the crew shuffled back in one by one, getting in places to film that day's episode. It means she's good food? <laughs> oh no. Kyle continued to sit motionless, cameras rolling, as the crew chatted about their days and got in position. Eventually, the crew officially started the next episode. Kyle was prompted to introduce himself again. Kyle had produced an incredibly artistic episode. You did it, Kyle. Kyle was artistic. Somehow it worked out. Oh, wait, and apparently eating Gabby is like the correct thing to do. Have fun. I hear this game is very normal from Get Giatti on Twitch. How's it going, man? <laughs> Good to have you here. I'm gonna be honest, man. I don't, I, I, I don't know what's happening. I'm very confused. Uh, but it sounds like you had a lot of fun. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Well, Kyle was artistic. We did something right. Um, I thought we would get something else for the eat everything run. Unfortunately not. We can reset it. There is- there was a locker in the closet. Should we have a look at that? Don't worry, I read 40,000 words of it and I don't know what happened either. It was a bit of a blackout for me, a fugue state. <laughs> it's okay, we'll believe you. It was valid for Walter White as well. You know? Could see it happening. Ah. <sighs> Okay, well, let's, uh, exit the bed, open the closet, rusty locker. Kyle knelt down and inspected the old, rusty container that had been in his closet for ages. It was locked, but had a blade-shaped slot in the top. A blade-shaped slot? I, I don't think we found, like, a weapon at any point, did we? I can scavenge for resources. Kyle quickly crouched down on the floor, realizing his immediate need for... Kyle began to comb through the damp piles of filth and mold on oh. his floor in search of helpful items. After finding and eating a few bits of crumbs and old cheese, Kyle found something much more important. Because that's dinner taken care of. Indeed, it was the corpse of Harry, a <laughs> friend that had gone missing years ago while at Kyle's house. Kyle was glad to see him again, but was unsure of whether to interrupt such an important day with Harry business. I don't know if it's the time. Uh, deal with Harry. Kyle hoisted Harry onto his shoulder and took him outside. Kyle began dragging Harry's body down the street, drawing many, many stairs. I think we're still naked while doing this, too. Kyle knew exactly where he needed to take Harry's corpse. On a lovely playdate. Just the two of them. Kyle and Harry started at the arcade, 
Kyle used Harry's arms to operate the joysticks and push buttons. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> After five or six different games, the two friends had enough tickets for a single candy bar. Yeah, that sounds about right. They took their prize to the local park for eating. Kyle tried to feed some of the chocolate bar to Harry, but Harry seemed to not have an appetite. After eating, Kyle noticed a nearby playground. He dragged Harry over. Kyle tried to figure out a way to swing Harry onto the swing set, but, lacking the ability to grip, Harry kept falling out. Instead, Kyle started to lug Harry to the top of the slide and shove him down time and time again. <laughs> what is happening? He really shouldn't have eaten the old crumbs and Cheetos. Yeah, I think they've, like, fucked with his brain. <laughs> Finally, I don't think he's Kyle doing well. Kyle took Harry to the movies to see as many popular films as their pocket change allowed. Kyle quickly found that he had no pocket change, so he searched through Harry's pockets until he found his wallet. At least time isn't advancing. Kyle bought two tickets to a love romance. After getting inside, Kyle left Harry to go find a restroom. By the time Kyle had finished using the restroom, he had forgotten that he brought Harry along. Kyle watched a love romance by himself. Harry's corpse sat on a bench in the atrium. Oh my god! While Kyle was in the movie, a beautiful thing happened. Harry's corpse, imbued with the power of friendship and love, was reanimated. Oh, okay. Harry's old, rotten flesh gained color and life. His fingernails regrew. His missing eye came back. By the time the movie was over, Harry was able to greet Kyle with a large, friendly hug as his old self. Still naked, by the way. Kyle was confused, but delighted to have his long-lost friend meet him on his way out of the theater. The two made plans to get drinks together and parted ways for the day. Kyle returned home, forgetting about the interview with Rachel. Oh, we just went a completely different direction. Kyle helped a friend. I had nothing to do with the interview. <laughs> okay. The good ending. Try again with change. Do you think we can take Harry, like, somewhere new? Because we have more pocket change. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna be one. There's still- uh, uh, Okay, so eating Gabby was good food. Apparently. So let's get ready, but eat Gabby for our meal. Okay, we, we don't have anything for the rusty locker still. Kyle decided to take some time to choose the perfect outfit, knowing how important appearance is. Uh, Uncle Taito, thank you for the 5,000 bits. Uh, what the fuck is happening, they say. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Thank you very much, man. Uh, Guy Moose, thank you for the four gift subs earlier, too. Thank you very much. Did the armor have a sword? I don't know. Kyle was unsure of what exactly caused him to decide to wear his armor, but it felt like the right thing to do. After much squeezing and sweating, Kyle managed to wrap the metal suit around his dumpy self. Okay, that's all good. We need to sit at the desk. Uh, I should get the stuff for the time travel, because the time travel is going to help us survive a little longer so i need the flashlight kyle. and the assorted change kyle scooped up so i should pick that up will i have enough time to both eat gabby write the notes and no i'm not going to okay if we if we head off we can eat gabby on the way And get everything we need from the tech store. So buy the batteries. Kyle counted. Kyle cram. Turn to the street. Kyle, uh, quickly consume Gabby. Kyle unhinged his jaw and swallowed Gabby whole. Perfect. Job done. Kyle returned to the middle of the street. Apartment. Bedroom. Oh, it's gonna be close. Closet. Inspect the flashlight. Kyle shined his flashlight into his moist cave-like closet that had not seen light in years. After several minutes of searching around with the light, Kyle saw something unusual in the back. There was a pile of strange items, we made it. including okay. a small metal box with a large red button stamped with travel time. Travel time. 
Kyle, bored of the situation, mashed the button, hardly reading the label above. The box hummed and shook. The outside metal grew hot and slowly curved in on itself. In a moment, it was early in the morning. Kyle had gained several hours of preparation time. 30 hours is a lot of time just for the morning. <laughs> okay, it let us do that. That's good. So now we have the armor. We've got food for the day in the form of Gabby. We have a lit flashlight as well. So now what are we going to do? Now what do we do? We, we, we need to write the notes for the interview. Kyle wrote down his first question. Time travel again. I don't think I can, unfortunately. Kyle wrote down his second question. Okay, are we in the raw egg? Kyle wrote down his third question. What's your funniest story? See how excited Kyle wrote gets. down his last question. Uh, are you guilty? If, if our phone worked, we could do something with that, but sadly it doesn't. Try to fix the phone. I assume if I went to the tech shop, I might be able to. You have Gabby. Kyle ripped his page of notes out of the notebook. Oh, I ran out of time there. Okay, uh, where do, where do we want to go? Do I need bad food to vomit up Gabby? Does that ever work? <laughs> I don't know what else to do at my time. Exit the bedroom. Move to the kitchen. I can open the Kyle fridge. Kyle opened the fridge, intending to find something to eat. Kyle constructed a breakfast of poached eggs and toast, along with a small fruit cup and grilled sausage. I can smash the breakfast, but I don't know what that's going to accomplish. Or do I need to eat this? I did eat Gabby. I don't know if Gabby counts as a, as a meal. <laughs> I don't know if it does. Let's eat, let's eat this. Kyle ate his breakfast slowly and thoughtfully, enjoying every bite. Okay, good food and Gabby consumed. We're doing good. We 15 hours still. Go fix the phone. I'll- I'll try to. There's no option to. This phone, said Kyle. This is just a review. Furthermore, when I submer- The attendant looked at Kyle, pursed his lips, and said- Feeling he had made it- That- that- that doesn't accomplish anything for us. Yeah, I can just go back in. That- that wasted a bunch of time. That's unfortunate. Kyle walked over to the strange door in the hallway, but found quickly that the door was locked from the inside. Force the door at forehead. Kyle decided it would be best to try to force the door open with use of his face. After smashing his features into solid wood oh, for several no. minutes, Kyle gained severe short-term amnesia. That might affect the show. Okay, well, we're ready. We're ready for the interview now. The helmet didn't help us, apparently, for some reason. I don't know why. Look, Tyler, thank you for another thousand bits. How did you go from you eating bugs is gross to eating a human person is acceptable? Pretty far slope, if you ask me. Kyle hurried to the set. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous we have amnesia, woman so we might not remember that we ate Gabby. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Kyle responded. Hello. Um, oh, <laughs> no. Kyle's ears began to ring from his concussion. Rachel looked at Kyle, slightly confused, but continued smiling. Before she noticed the glazed look in Kyle's eyes, the producer approached. Time to get started, he said, putting a hand on Kyle's shoulder. Let's get stationed. Kyle sat in the nearest chair, which was Rachel's. After a moment, Rachel hesitantly sat in the host chair. 
A moment after seating, okay, the studio lights goes. brightened and the cameras clicked on. Good morning, everyone, said Kyle. My name is... Uh... <laughs> Poor Kyle. Kyle made a desperate effort to remember his name, or really anything. I think this is going to overwrite everything else we uh, prepared for the show. Kyle looked at Rachel. Do you know who I am? He asked. Rachel looked back, confused. Who are you? Well, if you're not Kyle, I don't know who you are. Rachel smiled sweetly. Kyle made up his mind that he was probably Kyle. Well, um, he said, I'm Kyle. A long silence followed. Eventually, Rachel spoke again. Um, and I'm Rachel. Hi, everyone. She waved. Hi, Rachel, said Kyle. So why are we here? Rachel was visibly worried. Oh, no. Ha <laughs> ha, funny, she said. Weren't you planning on asking me any questions? I mean, I, I don't have any ideas, said Kyle. I don't think the notes are going to help us anymore. Kyle kept staring at Rachel. Someone coughed. Kyle looked around and noticed the crew. Who on earth are all of you? He asked. Nobody answered. Kyle got out of his chair and walked off frame, leaving Rachel alone with millions of viewers. Rachel smiled at the camera nervously. Well, she said, let me tell you some knock-knock jokes. I mean, it's a classic staple in times of crisis. You gotta, you gotta crack those open. Now you're gonna get the show back, Rachel. <laughs> Eventually, the producer ended the broadcast early due to technical issues. Kyle woke up in his bed the next day, remembering nothing about what had happened. We unlocked a new background. Oh, we can make it a little more colorful. Kyle forgot everything. Okay, so... Wait, wait, no, it's not in that, is it? Unlocks? Finish endings to unlock prizes. I don't- I still don't know how to get those. A basic Kyle experience, a glamorous showbiz experience. Kyle woke up. He is so famous. glamorous. Okay, um, we can become a ghost to get through Kyle the locked decided door if we to want. stay put and wither away. Kyle withered successfully and died. Kyle is now a ghost. Okay, so if we want to, we still have to get dressed. I, I actually have to, I still have to prepare for time travel so we can get some more stuff done. Kyle. The flashlight. A sword of change. Back to room. Okay, I need to uh, leave the apartment. Tech store. Buy the batteries. Insert. Return to street. Uh, haunt around. We can come back to haunt around in a moment. Let me just quickly eat Gabby. Kyle unhinged his jaw and swallowed Gabby whole. Get that in. Job done. Okay. Return to the bedroom. Open the closet. Inspect. Kyle. F. There was a pile of strange items. Travel time. Kyle, bored of the situation. The box hummed and shook. The outside metal grew hot and slowly curved in on itself. In a moment, it was early in the morning. Kyle had gained several hours of preparation time. Okay, so we've eaten now. So that's great. Um, where Harry? Can I do that? I need to get close. Choose an outfit. Kyle decided to take some time to choose the perfect outfit, knowing how important appearance is. Kyle chose the pasties made out of mashed skunk flesh. Getting the slimy garments to stay proved difficult. So Kyle opted to stick them to his body with hot glue. Perfect. Okay, sit at the desk. Uh, write our notes for Kyle the interview. Kyle wrote down his first question. 
Am I a mutter? Kyle wrote down his second question. Uh, ever eaten the raw egg? Kyle wrote down his third question. Do you ever smile? Kyle wrote down his last What's question. It's a guilty pleasure. Let's try Kyle... that. Okay, so have we eaten for the day because we consumed Gabby? Or do I still need to go get food? Yes, we have. Side door. I don't see a side door. Gabby counts as food. Okay. No, you messed it up. I've 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 never played this game. I've no idea what you're talking about. Side door. Where's the side door? I know the locked door. Kyle walked over to the strange door. Oh yeah, we can go Kyle through this again. There was a sewing machine inside the world. To walk straight through the door. Check supernatural artifact or get the laser claymore. Okay, so there's new stuff. Can the claymore fit in the in the slot? What was the slot? That was the locker, wasn't it? Expecting a battle, Kyle grabbed the laser claymore. Okay, we have a sword now. Okay, we'll leave the supernatural artifact for the time being. Float through the side door. Okay, that's the one we had. Bedroom. Closet. Rusty locker. Kyle knelt down and inspected the old rusty container that had been in his closet for ages. It was locked, but had a blade-shaped slot in the top. Put it in. Kyle took the laser claymore in his hand and slid it into the hole on top of the box. The box began to rumble slowly, but then it shook harder and harder. <laughs> Suddenly, with a snap, the box lid came loose. Kyle, giddy with excitement, grabbed the box to drag it into the light. With much sweating and pulling, Kyle slowly inched the box out of his closet. He began to giggle and drool. Okay. <laughs> Soon, the box had been transported into the middle of the room. We do have a full suit of armor, I think. Do we get the clothes? No, we, we went for the pasties that time. Kyle clapped his hands together and gripped the lid on either side. With a tug, it tumbled to the floor, revealing the contents of the box. There was nothing inside. Oh. Kyle was incredibly disappointed. This had been an opportunity for him. A way to find something new. A way to break up the routine. Suddenly, Kyle was struck with an unquenchable feeling of boredom about his life. Kyle jumped to his feet and burst outside, hungry to find anything that could give his day a feeling of interest. Painfully, Kyle started oh, grabbing God. anything he could reach, smashing it into his face to see what it could possibly do for him. Rocks, benches, people, squirrels, and the ground itself fell into Kyle's grasp. But soon, his energy began to wane. Slowly, sadly, Kyle made his way back to his apartment, quietly grabbing small items off the ground and rubbing them against himself. Kyle slowly sank into his bed, as bored as when he had left earlier that day. He looked at the ceiling, feeling hollow. The day had been very hard. It was a very upsetting day for Kyle. As he slowly fell asleep, Kyle wondered what he could possibly do tomorrow to inspire a new sense of interest in his life. He didn't know it then, but tomorrow, Kyle would try something new. Unlocked Kyle is hot dog. I... It's not really what I had in mind. I... What does that mean? <laughs> okay, there's a hot dog route, apparently. Reset. Change jobs. Kyle thought very carefully about the first move of his day. Become a hot dog salesman. Kyle laid in bed for a moment, thinking about the day ahead. He would produce another episode of his long-running show. Yes. Kyle thought about making breakfast. The same breakfast he'd been making for the past nine years. Kyle thought about the clothes he would wear. They had not changed for a long time. Kyle waited for something new and interesting to enter his head. Something fresh. Something exciting. Kyle continued to wait. Nothing came to mind. 
Kyle decided to have a midlife crisis. In a sudden moment of inspiration, Kyle threw his covers to the ground and stepped out of bed. Kyle had made a decision. Today would not be part of an old journey. Today would be the start of something new. Kyle Leaving walked it all over behind. to his desk and opened the middle drawer. He slowly removed an ancient withered stick of meat. What? Today, Kyle planned to make good on his childhood passion, the career he had abandoned to become a talk show host. Kyle looked caringly at the crusty hot dog in his hands. Then, he smiled. That's a loaded sentence. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> oh, God. Then he bent his lips downwards and slowly sucked the hot dog into his mouth and down into his stomach. Okay, we got food for the day. Kyle had become a hot dog vendor. He must now prepare for his first day running a hot dog stand. Start day. Kyle exited his bed and took a quick glance around his bedroom. Oh, okay, so now we're just time until hot dogs. It's changed. Okay, what, what? I assume we still need to get dressed for hot dogs. Kyle decided to take some time to choose the perfect outfit, knowing how important appearance is. A hot dog suit. Kyle put on his hot dog suit, which he had made by stitching hot dogs together when he was a child. You can chew on the suit. I, I mean, that could be a meal. Feeling fairly hungry, Kyle bent over and took a large bite out of his suit. He felt refreshed. That's good enough. food! Kyle continued to eat his clothing. Oh. Soon, Kyle had eaten most of the suit. The chunks that were left were enough to act as clothes, but barely. Kyle felt satisfied. The hot dogs had nourished him greatly, functionally giving him more time in his day. Okay. That, that reset it, apparently, for eating the hot dogs. That's pretty good. And we've got food now, and we've got 30 hours. Search for hot dogs at my desk. <laughs> Kyle searched through his desk to find more hot dogs that he could sell. But Kyle had moved his hot dog stash somewhere else. He shut the desk drawers empty-handed. Okay, uh, is there anything in the desk drawer? Maybe there's hot dogs in the pantry. Kyle grabbed the small key he kept in his desk. Back to room. We could scavenge for hot dogs. I think the pantry might have some. Move to the kitchen. I can think about hot dogs. <laughs> Check the pantry. The pantry door lock creaked as if it hadn't moved for years, but eventually opened. Instead of an assortment of canned goods and grains, Kyle's pantry stored his massive amount of bottled lard. Grab the hot dogs. Kyle searched around the pantry for a selection of hot dogs. After a few minutes of searching, Kyle found several stashes of old hot dogs loose and in paper bags. That, that's gonna kill a man, Kyle. I don't think he can sell those. He gathered them together and saw that he had a serviceable amount of hot dogs. Well, okay, we got him. We can think about hot dogs, too, for some preparation for them. Being in the kitchen gave Kyle a massive amount of hot dog-related nostalgia. He stood still, pondering. Continue thinking about hot dogs. Kyle continued to think about hot dogs. Continue thinking about hot dogs. Kyle still continued to think about hot dogs. Continue thinking about hot dogs. He thought about their flavor. He thought about how different brands tasted different. Continue thinking about hot dogs. <laughs> Kyle thought about hot dog texture and their feeling in his hand. Kyle was still thinking about hot dogs. Kyle's skin began to dissolve its bonds and melt from standing still too long. That's not good. Continue. He began to spread across the floor, creating small puddles through the kitchen. Continue. Kyle's jaw caved, causing the top of his head to slowly drop backwards and point towards the ceiling. Continue. <laughs> Kyle sunk lower and lower. His height was soon half of what it was before. Chunks of skin fell to the ground. Continue! Kyle's fingers and legs fell off, dissolving into drops of ooze as they we dropped. Let's go further! <laughs> Kyle was a large puddle of melted skin with bumps where his main features used to be. Kyle's atoms had lost all of their bonds. He had turned into nothing more than a meat-based soup. Okay, we can stop thinking about hot dogs now. Kyle made his way to the street corner. <laughs> 
apparently, we're okay after that. <laughs> after a long day of preparation, Kyle felt very ready for his first outing as a hot dog salesman. Oh boy. Kyle started to unpack his things onto the corner of the street. As he unpacked, Kyle realized he had never gotten a food cart oh, to make his hot dogs on, in. Oh, come on, Kyle. Kyle had no choice but to place his hot dogs on the ground. Looking at the hot dogs strewn across the sidewalk, Kyle realized he had found a golden opportunity. Kyle began to roll his hot dogs around in the dirt, pressing firmly so it would be embedded into the food. Crunchy. After a while, his back became sore from bending over. Kyle continued with the bottom of his shoe. Soon, all of the hot dogs had been sufficiently seasoned. Kyle swept his hot dogs into a pile and sat on the concrete next to them. It was a warm day, and lots of people were walking by. It wouldn't be long before someone came over to buy a hot dog. And in a couple minutes, as expected, a figure stepped over and stood in front of Kyle. Kyle, said Gabby, what are you doing? Oh, we didn't need Gabby that this time, that's right. Gabby, today I'm fulfilling my hot dog dream, said Kyle. This is my hot dog stand. Kyle, I... Gabby searched for a way to tell Kyle gently that he was not about to sell any hot dogs. And then, in a moment of pure compassion and grace, Gabby decided to be Kyle's first customer. That's very considerate, considering he consumed her last time. Kyle, I want to help inspire you, said Gabby. How much is a single hot dog? Kyle wordlessly grabbed a hot dog from his pile, jumped to his feet, and shoved it into Gabby's <laughs> oh mouth hole. Oh my bowl. god! Gabby realized that the hot dogs were delicious. Driven by pure empathy, Gabby began to grab passersby on the street and force-feed them Kyle's hot dogs. This, this is real messed up. One by one, the citizens of Kyle City became embarrassingly obsessed with his hot dogs. As Kyle's pile of hot dogs ran out, the demand for his wares increased. Kyle's hot dogs became a valuable form of currency. They were bought and sold on the international stock market. Men and women were made rich from investing in Kyle's hot dogs. You did it, Kyle. You made it. Kyle's hot dogs were all quickly snatched by investors. Having nothing left, Kyle decided to go home. As he entered his apartment, Kyle stopped. Today... He had turned over a new leaf. Today, he had followed his dream. Kyle had helped the economy, yes, but he had also grown as a person. Kyle was content. He's also like the pile of goop on the ground, but we'll overlook that part. Kyle was content. Okay, we need to find a hot dog stand this time, don't we? That's what we missed before. If I eat the hot dog suit, that will give me more energy as well. It's a good ending. Kyle thought. Yeah, become a hot Kyle dog salesman. Kyle in bed for a moment, thinking about the day ahead. Kyle had become a hot dog vendor. Okay. So don't go to the closet just yet. Um, because we need to do that last. Don't search for hot dogs here. I need the key for the pantry. Grabbed. I might need the change Kyle's to buy something. Okay, don't search for hot dogs yet. Uh, move to the kitchen. Don't think Kyle about hot dogs this time. That, that got the really weird. For the small key. The Grab the hot dogs. Kyle's After a few minutes of... He gathered them. Okay. Doing pretty good so far. Kyle opened the fridge, intending to find something to eat. I was thinking I could take, like, the mustard or something out of the fridge and take that with me. But, no, I can just search it for hot dogs. Kyle searched through the fridge, trying to find hot dogs. His search turned up nothing. Kyle was not surprised, as he never stored meat in his refrigerator. Kyle opened the fridge, intending to find something to eat. You can still eat the fridge. Okay, return to the hallway. 
Turn to the bedroom. Closet. Choose an outfit. Kyle's hot dog soup. Kyle put on his hot dog. And then we eat the soup. Feeling fairly hungry, Kyle bent over. It wasn't enough. Kyle continued to eat his clothing. Soon, Kyle had eaten most of the suit. The chunks that were left were enough to act as clothes, but barely. Kyle felt satisfied. The hot dogs had nourished him greatly, functionally giving him more time in his day. Oh, that doesn't give a full 30 hours. That's only 15. Okay. Um... So where are we going now? We still need to get the car. If I leave, maybe I can find it outside somewhere? I can still- uh, I don't think eating Gabby helps this time. Visit a marketing agency. Visit the tech store. I doubt they're gonna have like a hot dog stand at the tech store, but who knows with this game. Marketing agency. Professional had an attendant behind a desk. Approach the attendant. Kyle walked over to the attendant and gave her a big smile. Purchase marketing. Kyle walked to the desk and placed his pocket change on the table. How much marketing can I get for this? Asked Kyle. The attendant looked at his offerings. Um, maybe like a piece of paper on the message board outside? Said the attendant. Look, it's better than nothing. Kyle wordlessly purchased the flyer and walked out the door. Okay, where do we think we can find the hot dog cart? We have advertising. We have food. We have the hot dogs. Do you think it would be the tech store? Do you think Gabby might have it? What do we think? We have 10 seconds. Kind of craving hot dogs now, not gonna lie. Okay, uh, try the tech store. I can talk about hot dogs. Excited by his new job as a hot dog salesman, Kyle decided to share his happiness with the store clerk. As Kyle opened his mouth to speak, his stomach contracted violently. That's not good. Kyle started spewing out undigested chunks of hot dog and stomach lining. That's not good. The hot dog Kyle had eaten earlier had multiplied in his stomach, causing a massive amount of hot dog pieces to grow inside of him. Oh no. After a couple minutes of spewing, Kyle stopped. He looked at the attendant. Why did that happen last time? Oh, you know, <laughs> said Kyle, rolling his eyes and smiling. What does that insinuate? The attendant did not seem to want to respond, so Kyle decided to leave the tech store. Oh, damn it. I don't think we have time. Kyle made his way to the street corner. We didn't find a stand. After a long day of preparation, Kyle felt very ready for his first outing as a hot dog salesman. Kyle started to unpack we do his things onto the corner time, of the street. Though. As he unpacked, Kyle realized he had never gotten a food cart to make his hot dogs in. Kyle had no choice but to place... Okay, we've had Looking this Looking at the before. hot dog stroke... Kyle I think began we've, we've to had all this dogs. before. After a while, his back... Seasoned. Kyle. It was a warm day. And in a couple minutes, as expected, a figure step. Gabby comes around. Gabby. Kyle! And then... Kyle. Gabby helps. The delicious... As the world becomes obsessed with hot dogs. Kyle. I just wanted the car. Today... Kyle... Kyle was content. Damn it. <laughs> Does anyone know where we might find the hot dog stand? Ah, oh, Gianni, it's good to see you still here. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. It must be weird kind of hearing all this. Uh, back. I know even if I like, I know, like look at videos I've made on YouTube, it's like, oh god, I don't like... What was I doing? Or it's like, you know? It's weird looking back at it. What was I thinking? <laughs> Gabby, get her. Reset. Let's try it. Change job. Kyle. Hot dog salesman. Kyle laid in bed for a moment. Skip. Kyle had become a hot dog vendor. He must now prepare for his first day running a hot dog stand. Oh no, it's not weird at all. Not after reading the entire Kyle script. Nothing is weird to me anymore. Well, I'm glad you're desensitized to it. You know that that's a good outcome. <laughs> Uh, 
<sighs> okay. So, sit at desk. Uh, get the change. Kyle's. Get the key. Kyle. Back to room. I'm gonna get the closet now. Because Kyle's it's gonna it's gonna work out like Kyle roughly the same after we chew on the suit. See? It wasn't enough. Soon, Kyle. Kyle felt satisfied. The hot dogs had. Okay, so we've eaten the hot dog soup. Uh, I need to get to the pantry. Move to the kitchen. Check the pantry. Kyle wanted to unlock the pantry. Instead, grab hot dogs. Kyle after he get. Okay, there was nothing in the fridge. Return to the hallway. Where are we thinking we might find the car? I can go to the marketing agency as well. We've 18 hours. We're thinking Gabby might have the car. Okay, we can we can try it. This is the downstairs neighbor. Kyle approached his downstairs neighbor's door and knocked. A middle-aged woman named Gabby answered the door. <laughs> consume is still an option. I don't think consume is going to help us here. I don't think that's going to help. If I just talk to her, will she say anything different this time? Oh, but it's so funny to just eat her. Kyle unhinged his jaw and swallowed. <laughs> I can't Gabby help myself. <laughs> Job done. Kyle returned to the middle of the street. Okay, back at an agency. Rummaging the trash. Kyle began rummaging around in the trash can, looking for anything interesting. After picking through wrappers and cups, Kyle noticed there was a red button stuck to the bottom of the can. Press it. Kyle eagerly pressed the button. The wall above the trash can started shifting and spinning, eventually revealing a slab of pewter with an indent. Look at the indent. The slab was thick and old. A plaque was embedded in the top, reading, The slab embraces only a true weapon. Wait, what? Oh, so I need to bring the sword here, I think. The slab. Oh, I need to bring the sword. Okay. I've eaten Gabby. Is it going to be any different? It's going to be different, actually, because Gabby won't come to us this time, because we've already eaten her. So no one will buy the first hot dog. Kyle walked over to the attendant and gave her a big smile. Purchase some marketing. Kyle walked to the desk and placed... How much marketing can I... Um, maybe... That's a flyer? Kyle. Okay, so Gabby won't show up this time because we ate her. Kyle made his way to the street corner. After a long day of preparation, Kyle felt very ready for his first outing as a hot dog salesman. Kyle started to unpack his things onto the corner of the street. As he unpacked, Kyle realized he had I never gotten a food cart to make his hot dogs in. Kyle had no choice but to place his hot dogs on the ground. Looking at the hot dogs strewn across the sidewalk, Kyle realized he had found a golden opportunity. Kyle began to roll his hot dogs around in the dirt, pressing firmly so it would be embedded into the food. After a while, his back became sore from bending over. Kyle continued with the bottom of his shoe. Soon, all of the hot dogs had been sufficiently seasoned. That's a season and done. Kyle swept his hot dogs into a pile <laughs> and sat on the scabby. concrete next to them. Then, Kyle spat Gabby out of his mouth. Gabby tumbled to the ground. She stared at Kyle. Gabby, said Kyle, I need you to be my hot dog cart because I forgot to bring one. Perfect. Kyle, I really don't want to do that. Gabby got to her feet to go back to her house. But then Kyle had an idea. Gabby, no, said Kyle excitedly. You will sell my hot dogs and I will be your table. Kyle got down on his hands and knees and motioned with his head for Gabby to come over. Gabby pursed her lips, but having nothing better to do, decided to play along. Gabby piled the hot dogs on top of Kyle, sat on the ground behind him, and stared forward with a bored look. Within a few minutes, a curious crowd of observers had gathered. Gabby looked at them, but did not speak. It's going well. Kyle began to grow worried. Gabby, he whispered, prodding her knee. You need to tell them to buy my hot dogs. 
Gabby smoothly put her hand on Kyle's mouth and then addressed the crowd. Hello, everyone, said Gabby. It is time. <laughs> so ominous. says nothing else. Gabby immediately started ballooning inside, what? sprouting new arms and mouths from every part of her body. The mouths on her body opened and started to spit out camera bots. They crawled away to scour the city. What is happening? Gabby had turned into her ultimate form of the Mega Bug Vigilante. Oh wait, that was her. Under Gabby's watch, crime was completely eliminated in the city. Peace was everywhere. But over the coming months, Gabby continued to grow and produce camera bots. Eventually, the city was completely covered by Gabby's body and creations. There was little room to sit or walk. This is really weird. <laughs> During this time, Kyle conducted many interviews on the current state of Gabby and the benefits and deficits of her reign. But through this new, exciting, distinctive time in his life, Kyle felt a bit empty. He did not manage to sell a single hot dog. Gabby protected Endon. I don't... You can't anticipate what way it's gonna go, can you? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Several questions. Okay, well, we found the stone where we need a sword for it. Kyle thought. Kyle laid in bed. Okay, we for a need moment. to. We need to become a hot dog salesman. We need to become a hot dog salesman. Uh, how do we get the sword again? The sword's in the closet. It's in the locker. Where do we get the key for that? You need- I need to become a ghost, did I? Uh, I'm not gonna- Kyle just- Kyle it- But no, if I become a ghost, then I don't become a hot dog salesman. So I'm not gonna be able to go down to the marketing agency. Oh, but well, wait, I can use time travel to reset the day, can't I? So, what I should do is I should get all the other bits that I'm going to need after the day is reset, Kyle. including the change and the key for the pantry. Get that now. Okay. That's pretty good. Um, do I, I, I don't still write notes for the interview. though. Those feel pointless. I can take the flashlight too if I want. Kyle, grab the... Oh yeah, I need to take the flashlight so I can reset time. That's right. Back to room. Okay, exit, leave apartment, tech store. Buy the batteries. Oh, okay. Insert. Turn to street. I can hot around, but hotting around I don't think it's gonna help right now. Turn to apartment. Bedroom. Closet. Inspect. Kyle. There was a pile of strange items. Travel time. Kyle, bored of the situation, mashed the button, hardly reading the label above. The box hummed and shook. The outside metal grew hot and slowly curved in on itself. In a moment, it was early in the morning. Kyle had gained several hours of preparation time. Oh no, it's not letting me become a hot dog salesman still. I don't know how to get the sword. But also sell hot dogs. I can't become the ghost. Uh. Kyle quickly crouched down on the floor, realizing his immediate need. I can get for... bugs for the for Gabby. She might Kyle like them. Kyle started to pick between the fuzz of his bedroom carpet, hoping to catch a stray beetle or two. Soon, he had a small handful of various insects, dead and alive. Keep them Kyle for later. Stashed the wait, wait, view endings. No, view endings is just this, so that's not really going to help us. It's 117 endings. Oh my god. 
Kyle saw pretty good hot dogs. Gavi was protected. There is another one, apparently, if you forgot your stand. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> Apologies. That was an aggressive sneeze. Rachel was guilty engines. There's quite a few of them. Uh, how did I open the rusty locker? <laughs> I heard that downstairs and thought you died. I'm sorry, Kelly. I need the sword. Okay, choose the outfit, get the armor. After. Check the locked door. Kyle walked over to the float through. Kyle. Get the laser claymore. Expect. What's a supernatural artifact do? We probably want that as well, don't we? This was one of the many mysterious artifacts Kyle had been sent over the years. Take that. Kyle stashed the mysterious artifact for later use. I don't know what that's gonna do. Get back to the hallway. Uh, do we want to prepare for the interview or do we want to go see Gabby? We don't have time for both. Go see Gabby, okay. Kyle approached his downstairs neighbor's door and knocked. A middle-aged woman named Gabby answered the door. Okay, uh, greet and start conversation. Good morning, neighbor, said Kyle cheerfully. Gabby looked at Kyle expectantly. Ask Gabby about Kyle, ask Gabby about Rachel, ask Gabby about Gabby. What one of those is new? Which one's new? About Kyle. Okay. Gabby, Kyle asked very earnestly. How do you feel about me? The expectation on Gabby's face transformed into consternation. Even the worst of men are given grace, Kyle. She replied, though they don't deserve it. Oh, Jesus. As she finished her sentence, she gently pushed Kyle away and shut the door. Well, uh, that, that really could have gone better. We're going to be hungry now, too, unfortunately, because we didn't eat her. Uh, hot around. Kyle felt a sudden pull on his heart. Had he abandoned his job as a ghost? Was he fulfilling his spooky, ethereal role that he'd accepted while lying in bed this morning? Kyle realized he had no other choice. He must spend his day spooking about. I was about to pull from real life experience for that line. Oh no. <laughs> Kyle decided he should make a plan about who or where he should spook. I can spook myself, neighbor Gabby, or the interview. Kind of want to scare myself. That sounds fun. Kyle could think of nobody better to spook than himself. Sorry, just one second. There you go, guys. Self spook. Kyle sat on the sidewalk and looked at the ground. He took a deep breath. Kyle began to scream uncontrollably as he had managed to spook himself by his very existence. I'm oh, sure we do that every day. That's just being alive. Kyle jumped up from the sidewalk and began to run around, flailing his arms. Unfortunately, Kyle was unable to escape from the fact that he was himself. Kyle spent several minutes screaming. Yeah, that's an appropriate reaction. But as he screamed, Kyle realized it was becoming time for Rachel's interview. Continuing to scream, Kyle traveled to his studio. <laughs> Still screaming. That evening, Kyle tried to do well by his duties and conduct the interview with Rachel. But being able to only express pure terror, the episode consisted only of Rachel watching him scream. Okay, right, that... Might be a hard watch. <laughs> the episode was very popular. Apparently not. No, it caught on. Kyle was asked to continue screaming in the next episode. And the next. Oh, wow. Kyle's show was rebranded to Kyle is Scared with Kyle. The studio went on to produce many episodes. Happy days. 
Kyle remained existentially terrified of himself. It worked out. Kyle haunted himself. Screeves equals views. It's so engaging, the content. <laughs> you know, everyone tells you that for like online content, you need to have that quick reaction. Otherwise, your viewer's gonna lose interest. That's why I start my channel with, How's it going, gamers? Ah! <laughs> That's gonna keep them uh, around. Suddenly you're woken up, you're alert. You're worried for your life. <laughs> Engaged with the content. I'm gonna steal that intro from my own stream. <laughs> no bother at all. No, it, it'll work, it'll work. We'll start a new trend. Every time you just open a video. Ah! <laughs> oh no. That's the pain you feel after saying that line. Kyle thought Vic. Kyle okay. laid in bed. Let's become a hot Kyle. dog salesman. I don't know how we we get the sword. Out of the closet in time. Okay, uh, check in the desk. I need the key. Kyle grabbed the small. I I think I need Kyle. the change. We don't search for hot dogs here. Um. Okay, move to the kitchen. Pantry. Kyle wanted to unlock. Instead, grab the hot dogs. Kyle. After he hot dogs acquired. Turn to bedroom. Choose an outfit. Kyle. We're gonna eat the hot dog Kyle soup. Put on it. Feel it wasn't. Soon, Kyle had eaten most of the suit. The chunks that were left were enough to act as clothes. Kyle felt satisfied. Actually, if I'm doing the sword slab ending, I don't need the hot dog suit, do I? So I probably wasted some time even trying to go back for that. I don't even need the hot dogs. Presumably, we might be going a completely different direction. I don't know what the, what the sword and the slab's gonna do. Where do we go from here? How do we get this? I thought you were expecting the slab to lead to a hot dog cart or something. That sounds ridiculous now that you just lay it out like that, though. That's the thing. Uh, we still have 17 hours. What if you just didn't bring hot dogs? Check the locked door. I think the locked door is just a locked door. Kyle walked over to the strange door in the <laughs> hallway, but found quickly that the door was locked from the inside. Okay, there is something new. With a hum and a pop, Kyle used his massive knowledge of hot dog magic to change the door handle into a hot dog. Kyle sucked the hot dog into his mouth, opened the door, and walked through. It was a bit too sensual, that line. Uh, we can just get the laser claymore. We can also get the hot dog stand. It might be in here. Do we search for the hot dog stand in here? No, I gotta get the sword. Expecting a battle. Kyle started looking around for anything he could use to make a hot dog stand. Kyle rooted around. Oh no, it's taking too long. We should just take the claymore and run. Picked up buckets, pieces of wood, rusty nails, and bits of string. Soon, he had enough loose items to be reasonably sure of being able to craft a stand that wouldn't fall over. Oh, we have one! Okay, we actually have everything that we need. I still have the sword. Visit the marketing agency. Rummage in the trash. Kyle began rummaging around in the trash can, looking for anything interesting. After picking through wrappers and cups, Kyle noticed there was a red button stuck to the bottom of the can. Press it. Kyle eagerly pressed the button. 
The wall above the trash can started shifting and spinning, eventually revealing a slab of pewter with an indent. I hope it's alright with the time. It's a bit weird sometimes. The slab was thick and old. Yeah, the still plaque was embedded it. in the top, reading, The slab embraces only a true weapon. Insert the claymore. Kyle inserted the laser claymore into the indent. The claymore fit perfectly, snapping into place. Small metal hooks came out of all sides of the slab to hold it in place. With a pop, fizz, oh. and a magical elf chuckle, a human-sized rainbow gateway to another dimension appeared. Okay. The portal started sucking everything near it inwards, devouring chairs, trash cans, and Kyle himself. I don't think we're going to be able to run the hot dog stand this time. Kyle became part of a dizzying swirl. Lights and colors flashed all around him. He spun in circles rapidly. And in a moment, Kyle fell into the gummy bear and claymore land, where all matter is either gummy bears or claymores. That's an unfortunate combination. <laughs> Kyle was approached by a group of roaming gummy wasteland elves. Because of the harsh environment they lived in, the elves used their kin as blunt weapons to fend off attackers. Oh my god. <laughs> Kyle looked upon the elves and realized they must live in a depressed and war-torn culture. Jesus Christ! And then, in a moment of pure empathy, Kyle decided to help the elves. Kyle grabbed the two nearest elves, one in each hand, and started to give them a talking to about war and its troubles. Hello, you two, said Kyle. I wish to give you a bit of advice. Keep in mind that I'm dressed as a hot dog the entire time. But before Kyle could say anything more, the ground started shifting and morphed into a gummy bear monster. Kyle chucked the elves he was holding at the monster to fend it off, but it was to no avail. The monster charged at Kyle, throwing elves to the sides as it sped forward. Kyle had no choice but to become a gummy bear monster himself. I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> He started to cover himself in gummy bears and claymores. They stuck to his skin like meaningful, gooey hugs. After moments of a vicious, sticky flurry, Kyle was covered in the New World's material. Then, something wonderful happened. Using a combination of determination, elf magic, and method acting, Kyle truly transformed <laughs> into a real gummy monster. Good job, Kyle. But in his new form, Kyle was now not interested in fighting the other gummy monster. Kyle began swallowing every elf in sight in a wild, crazy rampage. I didn't expect this game to have so much eldritch horror when I started playing it. Happening a Over lot. The next several hours, Kyle rampaged around the whole gummy world, eating every last elf whole. Kyle had gifted the elves with a warm, nutritious new world to live in. Over time, the elves created a new society inside Kyle's stomach. There was no need for war. This is the good ending. They feasted on Kyle's stomach juices. Their culture entered a golden age. Eventually, Kyle turned back into a normal person and returned home. But the elves continued to live inside him. Kyle had saved a culture. Kyle helped the elves. We've now also unlocked that Kyle is Santa. Somehow from that ending. Because of course, that's the next logical step. After you devour society, you gotta become Kris Kringle. I don't know what's happening anymore. Because he is elves! <laughs> of course! That's how Santa's chosen! Change jobs. Kyle thought very carefully about the first move of his day. Embrace the Christmas spirit. As Kyle started to leave his bed, something stopped him. Maybe it was a smell in the air. Maybe it was the chill from outside, or maybe it was just pure luck. Kyle had been imbued with the spirit of Christmas. What date is it today? 23rd of June, okay. <laughs> just a bit early. In an instant, Kyle began to hear the dreams and wishes of every child in the world all at once. 
Kyle's newfound abilities were quite overwhelming. He clutched his head and screamed loudly. Oh, this is probably a more accurate depiction of what would happen if you became Santa. Like, every single child on the planet is now in your ear. And some of those children are gonna be little shits. Santa, I want the iPhone 12X! <laughs> More screaming. The voices did not stop. Kyle curled into a small ball and rocked back and forth. Yeah, this is an appropriate response. Not to be left alone, Kyle was gifted with a Christmas miracle. Small bumps began forming under his skin, pushing outwards. Kyle's skin began to stretch and tear, letting loose a small oh army of my elves that had God. been growing in his stomach. The elves scattered around Kyle's apartment, foraging for anything remotely nutritious to feed on. <laughs> Kyle burst an elf army. He had been chosen to become Santa Claus. We unlocked Santa. Kyle decided that the best course of action was to fulfill his duties as Santa Claus. Kyle stepped out of bed, stray elves falling from various holes in his skin. Why is there so much body horror? I don't know. <laughs> it's actually so gross. <laughs> Kyle must now continue his day as Santa Claus. This is a body miracle, says Gianni. <laughs> oh no, man! This is this is some fucked up stuff. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get ready. Choose an outfit. Kyle decided we gotta to get take the Santa suit to choose the perfect outfit, knowing how important appearance is. Kyle appropriately chose to dress as Santa, who he was. Okay, so we're dressed as Santa. We have to create Santa's list. Kyle knew he must construct his naughty and nice list. He began to think of all of the people in his life. Kyle thought of Gabby. Oh wait, wait! I <laughs> through Kyle's floor and began <laughs> I punching him in the face more. repeatedly. <laughs> I think Gabby's dead. After a few minutes, she left through his bedroom door. Uh, I'm severely injured. Kyle thought of Rachel. Put put Rachel on the naughty list too. Kyle thought of Techno Jim. He's nice. Kyle thought of Kyle. I Kyle, I'm I'm surprised you're alive more than anything. Put him on the naughty list. Kyle ripped his list out of his notebook. Okay, the naughty nice list. Is prepared. Um, let's get some change. We gotta Kyle pick up some up Christmas the presents. Scattered around the desk drawer. Kyle's too far insane to qualify for naughty. This will never float in court. Isn't there a Christmas film where Santa gets put on trial? And it's like a crime drama, but based around Santa actually being Santa. I vaguely remember that. And I kind of want to watch it again now. Miracle on 34th Street? Is that it? Grandma got run over by a reindeer. I don't think it's that. That's a different kind of Santa crime. Wasn't there a movie where Santa was interrogated by the feds? There's actually quite a few movies where that happens. Honestly. Like, even, like, Tim Allen's Santa Claus, like, the police are after that man. They know what he's done. Oh, sorry, we're, we're supposed to be Santa. Uh. Okay, what, what else do we need for Santa? We got the suit, we got the naughty nice list. Presumably we need a sled. Where do we think we're gonna find a sled? Like, in... In the locked room? Can I use Santa magic? Kyle walked over to the <laughs> strange like door in the hallway, but found quickly that the door was locked from the inside. Christmas magic. Kyle stretched out his hand, twisting it in its socket around and around. He sang a Christmas tune under his breath. The door swung open, letting Kyle through. Into the room. I can still take the laser claymore. 
Um, let's take the supernatural artifact in case that helps us be Santa better. This was one of the many mysterious artifacts Kyle had been sent over the years. Should I just destroy it? Do you think a sleigh will appear? Kyle began pounding the mysterious artifact with both fists. Within a few hours, it had become dust. An ancient force trapped in the artifact was released and turned Kyle into a lizard demon. Oh, okay, we're gonna be lizard Santa. Alright. I won't question it. Uh, we might as well get the laser Expecting claymore. Expecting a battle, Kyle grabbed the laser claymore. Get the sewing machine. Kyle walked over to the dilapidated sewing machine. Its box was only half removed. Okay, let's go. Kyle hurried to the set. Sitting across from his host chair Wait, was a glamorous Wait, are we still going to the interview? Air of genuinity. Are we not gonna go off and be Santa? As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Rachel's smile turned to horror as she realized she was looking not at a human, but a lizard demon. It, it's just Santa. It's okay. Pandemonium ensued. Scripts went flying. Crew members ran in all directions. Lights were knocked over. As Kyle watched the chaos around him, his lizard demon form enveloped his last shred of humanity. Kyle grew to a massive size. Within minutes, he had demolished the now empty set. Oh no. A local force of five spunky teenagers in brightly colored apparel arrived at the scene to fight Kyle. As the teenagers swung at him with their spunky individualized weapons, Kyle pushed them over with his foot. Kyle's rampage of the studio ruins continued, but in another part of the city, a hero was rising up. In a dusty apartment on the top floor of an old skyscraper in the oldest part of town sat a large man named Frank. Few people in the world knew that Frank existed. Fewer knew his name. Frank was watching the local news. A story about the studio rampage was playing. Quickly, Frank got up from his chair. He opened a small door hidden behind a poster on his wall. I just wanted to be Santa. Inside was an unbelievable mound of fat-ridden foods, unrefrigerated and fairly rotten. Frank began to consume the mound at a frightening rate. His body began to puff. <laughs> Why is there more body horror? <laughs> How many times does this happen? Frank expanded faster and faster with each minute. He burst through the roof. Within minutes, Frank was a towering behemoth. He rolled across the city, rebounding off of buildings and getting cheers from onlookers below. Approaching Kyle, Frank gave a long, painful heave upwards into the sky. To Kyle, the sky turned black. He looked upwards to see the monstrous figure hurtling towards him. And in a moment, Kyle was completely enveloped in rubbery fat, unable to move or make noise. <laughs> this is just weird. <laughs> Frank was quite tired and passed out where he lay. Several years went by as Frank slumbered. As Kyle was held in Frank's warm, fatty embrace, his humanity <laughs> began to return. When the first winter came, Frank's body recycled his fat for resources. Over many months, he shrank in size. Eventually, Kyle was human and Frank was thinned. They both walked away from the scene as new men. Neither realized how much time had passed. Merry Christmas, everyone! That was so weird. <laughs> I want to try to get like a proper Santa ending. Kyle thought. Okay, embrace the Christmas spirit. Kyle must now give birth to the elves. Open the closet. Choose an outfit. Kyle the Santa suit. Kyle appropriately chose to dress as Santa. Okay. I take it we need the naughty and nice list. Kyle knew he must construct his naughty and nice list. Kyle thought of Gabby. I'm gonna put Gabby on the nice list this time. Kyle thought of Rachel. Naughty. Kyle thought of Techno Jim. Nice. Kyle thought of Kyle. Naughty. Kyle ripped his list out of his notebook. Are we just giving up on the hot dogs? I was invested in that storyline. <laughs> we never did just sell hot dogs with the carrot, did we? We got lost in uh, uh, by consuming the elves and transforming. 
Maybe we should go back and just be a hot dog salesman, because I think we worked out all the steps to that. Okay, Santa suit, naughty nice list. Uh, what else do we need for Santa? Move to the kitchen. Make Christmas cookies. Kyle thought it would be nice to make some Christmas cookies. He opened every drawer and cupboard in his kitchen, trying to decide what he would top his cookies with. I mean, all, I think all we have is lard. Soon, he had narrowed it down to four choices. <laughs> Why is this even here? Why is this even an option? Ah, uh, this is... Kyle f finally ground the dead rats, sprinkling them delicately over the top of his cookies. What a nutritious meal this will make, said Kyle. Kyle placed one of the dead rats in his sink on each cookie. They were very bad. Bad food. Oh, no. Okay, uh, leave the apartment. Go on Santa duties. Kyle realized it was wise to conduct his duties as Santa. Give presents to children. Kyle could think of nothing better than to gather children around him and give them presents. Kyle supposed it was possible there were children in the nearby park, so he quickly walked over. Upon arriving, Kyle saw several families happily walking around and playing in the snow. Kyle called for the families to gather around him. The children bounced over expectantly. I hope I don't just, like, throw up on the children. <laughs> Kyle presented the children with a gift. <laughs> Wisdom! <laughs> oh no, we don't have presents. Children, it is time to listen to Santa, said Kyle. The children leaned in eagerly. I have lived a long and full life, said Kyle, and seen many things no man could imagine. By the way, do you want a dead rat cookie? From the many experiences I've had and people I've met, I feel qualified to give you this piece of wisdom. Kyle coughed into his hand and took a deep breath. Don't feed your girlfriend sea monkeys on the first date. There may not be a second. I mean, that is sound advice. The children stared at Kyle blankly. Kyle screamed and began tearing at his stomach. More <laughs> no! Elves were on their way out. No, look away, children! In a sudden explosion, <laughs> elves flew out of Kyle's skin, covering the group in hungry, crawling elves. Oh my god! The parents were whipped into a frenzy of frantically pulling elves off their children and themselves. The elves, suddenly free and ravenous, bit at the parents' hands with their teeth and screamed at the top oh, of their lungs. Oh, Jesus Christ! Kyle, uncomfortable with the situation, decided to leave. On his way home, Kyle greeted everyone he passed. It had been a lovely evening. Inside his door, he stopped and smiled. You're a sick man, Santa. Kyle knew he had done something You're wonderful a sick man. for the children in his community. Kyle gifted wisdom. Jesus Christ. That was, that was horrific. Oh my god. That sound effect where like... It, oh. It's just a pop. This guy... This is not what I expected. I'm actually horrified. Okay, let's just get like a normal hot dog ending. Kyle I don't want to be Santa anymore. Kyle laid in bed. Kyle. I don't want to be Santa. Okay, we need the key for the pantry. Kyle gra and we need the Kyle. change. Okay, go back. Uh, let's open the closet now. Kyle's and get the hot dog suit and Kyle eat it. Put on his feeling f it was suit. Kyle felt satisfied. Okay, up to 28 hours. So we've eaten the hot dog soup. I need to exit. 
I need to use my hot dog Kyle magic. Walked over to the sh With a hum and a pop, Kyle you Kyle sucked the hot dog into his mouth, opened the door, and walked through. Search for a hot dog stand. Kyle yeah, we can get this. There's Kyle enough for it. Soon he Okay, move to the kitchen. Check the pantry. Kyle Unlock the pantry. Inst Grab hot dogs. Kyle After a few he gathered them together. We have almost everything, and we can go dogs. get advertising. Okay. Turn to the hallway. Leave the apartment. Visit the marketing agency. Approach the attendant. Kyle walked over to Purchase the attendant marketing. and gave her a big... Kyle walked to the desk and placed his pocket change on the table. How much marketing can I get? So we um, have our marketing. Kyle Wordless. Okay, we have everything we need now. We have the stand, we have hot dogs, we're in the hot dog suit, we purchased marketing, and we had a good meal. It can't possibly go wrong. We've done everything right this time. We still have a bit of time to go to the tech store. Maybe they have something. Let's talk about hot dogs. Excited by his new job as a hot dog salesman, Kyle decided to share his happiness with the store clerk. As Kyle opened his mouth to speak, his stomach no. contracted violently. Kyle started oh, spewing no, I out forgot about this. chunks of hot dog and stomach lining. The hot dog Kyle had eaten earlier had multiplied in his stomach, causing a massive amount of hot dog pieces to grow inside of him. After a couple minutes of spewing, Kyle stopped. He looked at the attendant. Oh, you know, <laughs> said Kyle, rolling his eyes and smiling. I still don't know what that implies. The attendant did not seem to want to respond, so Kyle decided to leave the tech store. Okay, we're, we're, we're ready to go. Kyle made his way to the street corner. We have everything we could need. After a long day of preparation, Kyle felt very ready for his first outing as a hot dog salesman. Kyle started to unpack his things onto the corner of the street. Kyle took out his cart pieces and began to assemble them. Everything's going well. With a little trouble, Kyle was able to finish constructing a serviceable hot dog stand. Okay, do we just click continue or do we eat? If, what, what do we... I don't want to eat all our hot dogs. If I eat the hot dog, it's going to be... Kyle consumed the hot dogs in a depraved state. He filled his body with hot dogs until he expanded and began to tower over the city, eventually exploding. Hot dogs rained down and everyone down below. And a national holiday was declared. Like, who knows where this is going? I just want an ordinary hot dog vendor ending. <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> Kyle then started to place the hot dogs he had brought into the cart. They were cold, but Kyle had never cooked his hot dogs as a child and didn't want to start now. Oh great, it's raw meat. His prep finished, Kyle looked around and smiled, waiting for his first customer. After a few minutes of waiting, one customer came to Kyle's stand. After a brief exchange of pleasantries, the customer bought two hot dogs and left, pleased. About 30 minutes later, two girls came over to the stand and bought one hot dog each. It's going well. Over the next few hours, Kyle received a healthy handful of customers, each left with a hot dog and a smile. That's great! As evening fell, Kyle found himself to be just about sold out of hot dogs. Perfect! Tired but pleased, Kyle closed his stand for the day and wheeled it home. Suddenly, Kyle's stomach started to expand. The Christmas elves wanted vengeance. They'd grown hungry for the hot dogs. Kyle burst open. <laughs> Kyle had made a modest but livable amount of money at his hot dog stand that day. It would be hard, but if he kept his focus, he could make it work. Millions of fans were confused as to why Kyle hadn't shown up for his show that evening. But the few that had bought a hot dog from him understood. They knew that Kyle made a decent hot dog salesman. We got a normal ending. <laughs> Oh my god, it's mundane. Best ended, he just became a hot dog salesman. That's it. 
That's all we needed. Oh, God almighty. Okay, I think on that note, I am unfortunately going to have to wrap up the stream for today. I do have to hop off. Um, I'm craving a hot dog. I haven't eaten in a while. Uh, but thank you so much, everyone, for coming by the stream today. I, I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone who subbed. Thank you to everyone who gave bits. Thank you to the mods as ever for being on, on hand. Uh, special thank you to Gianni for just floating about in chat. Uh, the voice actor for this game. That was actually kind of cool. It's lovely having you, man. Fantastic performance all around here. Jesus Christ, this game is fucked up, though. Like, oh my god. <laughs> like, there are 117 endings, everyone. Godspeed. I wish your mental health well. Thank you for streaming this lovely game, RT. A delightful stream. Oh, thanks for, thanks for hopping by, man. It was good chatting. <laughs> Jesus Christ, yeah, it's so twisted. I, I did not expect so much body horror. Like, once people started to point that out in chat, like, you're right. Like, it's so gross. <laughs> uh, I think I just need a hot dog now. I think I'll be okay. I'm never gonna watch Tim Allen's The Santa Claus is the same again as well. I don't think I can. Who wrote the script? I don't... It's someone in a lot of pain. Is my guess. Oh, God. Uh, let me see who is streaming so I can leave you in their care. Uh, let me see. Uh, Italics is playing something called Kepler's First. I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, but he's an entertaining, he's an entertaining fellow. He's a lovely man. Uh, so go say hey to him and find out what that is. Hopefully there's less body horror. Uh, the writer is, is it John Szymanski? Apologies if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, brother of David Smansky of Dusk. John is also working on uh, My Friendly Neighborhood. Very, very talented man. Very nice. A little scary, I suppose. Okay. I'll have to check that out. I'm not, I'm not familiar with his other work. Okay. Thanks for coming, folks. Uh, next stream will be on Monday. Because uh, I'm flying back to Ireland this weekend. And I'm going to get some rest after that. Have a good night.